All right, hello, welcome, Race Brain Podcast. My name is Rich Ryan. I got Jack Bauer. We got Bracken Crocker. Today we're going to be talking about DecaFit Pennsylvania and all that happened there. Maybe some other stuff, but that's going to be the main focus. Recapping that race, but first, BK, how are you feeling today? Feeling good. Feeling great. Feeling good. Feeling great. Yeah. Had Jack? a good week of training. Jack and I are starting to put our noodles together. That, I'm going to rephrase oh, that. Yeah. We're starting not, to put our, brain, our minds together. Brain noodles. <laughs> brain noodles not, not, together. Not, not noodle noodles. <laughs> Planning yeah. out a, a doubles assault here. Life's good. Are you guys signed up? Is this official? Can we, can we talk about this? We're not signed up. We will sign up. But like, we're thinking this is not I was, like. I was looking at flights, so I'm taking it seriously. And how often, Jack, you got to be. To book a flight, I mean, three months has to, four months has to be like your minimum amount of time. You're, no, no, you're, the, the you're sweet spots, getting... the sweet spots, three to five weeks out. Three to five weeks. If you buy too early, they didn't lower the prices to lure you in it yet. It's just people who are desperate to try to find their flight. They're like, oh my god, it's going to sell out. Flights never sell out. They'll sometimes actually overbook it, but people usually just decide last minute not to go on there. Yeah, three it's more about the price going up window. rather yeah. than selling out. Nah, three to five weeks. Three to five they're, weeks. They're a bunch of, bunch of websites like the points guy and secret flying and stuff they've got uh different tips on when the best day to buy it is like don't buy it on a friday or saturday because that's they know that people are looking for flights on wednesday days. night and yeah. you know what the airlines read all the same websites they know there's some truth to it though yeah, I've bought true. a lot of flights. You've bought a lot of flights. I probably you're typically buying it like a week out bracket. Your flights, I find Thursdays are ideal for a Friday morning flight. <laughs> oh, last second one. Pro tip. Pro tip. What, what does it say that on the websites, Jack? Doesn't. I would love to see like your favorites. I uh, just imagine it's all just like your favorite browsers, just like Mr. Money Mustache, and just like different things <laughs> of, of ways people can. I'm Save more money about the point, yeah, credit card R- points. Ramit Seti. I like him a little bit. I like Ramit too. I yeah, like Ramit too. He's good. I can I teach actually, you to be rich. So, so when I, and this was 2014, so I, like I graduated with $100,000 in student loan debt and I was just like out of control um, without realizing that it was going to take a while. And I've read his book, I Will Teach You to Be Rich. And it just like literally transformed my financial philosophy. And I sent him an email and he, he, he emailed me back. Wow, I was really? Like, Sweet, this guy actually cares about people, and it was definitely like a virtual it. assistant. No, I don't know. It, it, this was like nine thirty at night, just on a random day, probably 2014, 2015. So before he like really blew up. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's he's my pick when it comes to money advice. Way more than Dave Ramsey and stuff. Dave Ramsey's a dinosaur at this point. We have the same birthday. That's the only thing that I like about him. Really, he's got good stuff, but he's yeah. Whenever you have one thing, that's your thing. You fail to adapt with the times. Is Dave Ramsey the coach who learned something in the 1960s and he's been doing it ever since and he's still the coach at your program and he doesn't know, he doesn't care that double threshold training is a thing right now. He doesn't care about all these other, you know, recovery techniques. It's like, this is what I learned. You're going to follow my method because this is the method that works. Yeah. Most likely. Do you think, and it do still you think works. I should? It does. Yeah. I mean, if you stick with any one of those yeah. styles of debt reduction or whatever. Do you think I should come out with the book of the same name of Ramit? Just proper, proper rich? It'd be like my autobiography. Mm-hmm. I will teach you to be rich, parentheses, Ryan. Good there work. Go. I like Good it. Good work. All right, squad. So we have deck of Is there anything else really we can talk about? Worlds, worlds, there. track and field. That We'll save that to the back end. I don't know how many people are plugged in. I was dialed in. I watched all of the prelims of the 5K, the steeple. watched the full 10K. I was in there. Oh, yeah. So we can talk about Worlds a little bit. But let's talk about DECA. Fit. Northeast. Probably, like, we, we anticipated the no, the most stacked field on the women's end of things. So we had some cool things come out that way. But let's, why don't you start with the dudes? You started off. You were there. I was there. It was a race, in fact. But the we'll talk about the podiums. That was Dylan Scott, Nick Raker, David Magida, just doing David Magida stuff, sitting in, like, eighth or ninth. Still ends up on the podium. But Dylan Scott was that guy. Dylan really showed out. And, and we, during the, I didn't watch the uh, broadcast too thoroughly. I watched it pretty much with 
um, just kind of get my splits and see how things kind of looked and really listen to the broadcast. I'm sure they did great. But Dylan mentioned to me that no one had even mentioned his name about potentially being on the podium or winning this thing until he was actually in the lead or, or winning the thing. And we did a yeah, little. I think, I think Luke apologized. He's like, "Oh crap, Dylan didn't lead. Sorry for uh, we never not even mentioned said you his in the name. preview." And then we did a a little poll. We have polls now for on Race Brain. If you listen on Spotify, you can participate. We said we had a poll of who would win. It was Magida, Riker, Richie Remmer, or Dylan Scott. No one picked Dylan Scott. Nick Riker got more votes than Dylan, huh? I mean, Nick Riker listens to the show, so yeah, I think he probably, he probably, clicking, probably but... plugged himself in. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if he's a Spotify listener. Probably not. I mean, th- this frequently happens in when I do like the Spartan Race prediction contest. It's like, who thinks so and so is going to get in the top three and like a Nick Mask early on, where no one saw that happen in San Luis Obispo. Or, You're like, trying to. I drafted. Uh, you might have been like the one person actually. Now that I think Correct. about it, there have been a couple other instances where it's like nobody thought this would happen, and then it does. So. Just Dylan just kind of always gets overlooked. Rich, did you talk to him? Do you have any insight on his wardrobe choice? On yes. his wardrobe choice? Oh, yeah, we did. T- <laughs> we were talking about the tights. And I was like, are you going to wear those for the race? He's like, I don't think so. And then he started warming up and showed up at the start line with the tights on. He said, he said, like, makes me feel like Steph Curry. I said, yeah, it makes you look like that way, too. You're going to perform that way wearing those <laughs> tights. And he did, he did that work in those tights. What would you guys think? How'd it look? Would you prefer out of Dylan Scott? Full tights, indoor race, no shirt, or no shirt, cargo pants, cargo shorts. So I know what Brax is going with. Cargo pants. I think that was his thing, but he anyone with long legs looks fast in tights. Mm. So I'm okay yeah. with it, but I just know how hot those places get. I don't understand the DECA shirtless thing because... Like the sit ups and the ram burpees, and you're just sweating all over the ground, and it feels bad, and you're slipping on the ground with the sit ups, and you're getting you're getting sweat on everything. One of my big issues in hybrid is just keeping the, my sweat off of everything, so I wouldn't want to add for like free flowing sweat to that, and I can't stand my sweaty skin touching the ground. So, well, you're not a shirtless guy in general. You don't you're not shirtless for when was the last time you've been shirtless and. In- in a race, Bracken takes a shower with a shirt on. He he hates being shirtless. I'm I'm in a general state of undress in life, but in OCR, I got sick of barbed wire cuts, and mm. my skin reacts very negatively, much more negatively the older I get. And so, grass and plants and stuff just give me like a rashy exterior every race. So I started wearing tops for that. And then with high rocks, and I haven't done an official. Well, I did a Deca strong. But with high rocks, I just don't like sweating on the ground and getting all that. Then everything sticks to you on the burpee broad jumps and stuff. I just didn't like it. I think it, I train I think shirtless. High rocks, you do train shirtless. Most of the time, unless I'm going to be on the ground. Yeah. I think going shirtless in DECA is less of an issue than in, in high rocks. By the time I'm at the sled push. I'm already drenched. And if I'm going to do like with the elbow pits and leaning over, yeah. then I actually start slipping up of it where a shirt is a little bit better to help manage that sweat. In DECA, the only thing that really were, that could sweat could be an issue is the dead balls. And it's just not heavy enough. For Sit ups. Like, I find myself slipping on the mat a little. No, no, no you, your sit ups are I, good. Rich, that was, that, you were that was like where sub I, 40 seconds or something. That right? was my undoing. I looked at my sit up, my splits for my sit ups in Atlantic city was about that fast. And then I got up and had my fastest run. So I'm like, cool. And then in, in training, even I just did like one or two workouts. And after sit-ups, I felt better. Like my heart rate comes down. I feel more fresh. Came out of sit-ups in PA and was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it is now, it is now over. I didn't think that. I was like, let's hang on. Let's try to get this ski under control. But uh, it never, it never happened. But sure. I think shirtless is fine. I don't mind it for the sit-ups in okay. teams because you finish and have to like tag your partner. Like Meg was right behind me and I kind of threw the ball and went and tagged and the ball just hammered my midsection, like below mm-hmm. my ribs. So kind of knocked the wind out of me for a little bit. I was like, oh boy, this might be a tough leg that I'm about to go. But we, we persevered. We persevered. Mm-hmm. So outside of Dylan's wardrobe choice, which is always a topic, 
Mm -hmm. It's always worth talking about Dylan and how he's looking. The peach rings. Did he have those in, in his pants or his tights? I think, it's, I think it's too short. So Dylan, what's one thing he did tell me is that he took Friday off completely. So guy was coming in there fresh. A day days before, ago. not two days before. Interesting. For Dylan, a day off in what general. Happened? That's true. I yeah. think he it must have been miserable to be around that Friday. <laughs> Or it was just way too much energy. Just going nuts. Yeah, yeah. Like so, Tyrone. <laughs> yeah, uh, Biggins. Um, so he was fresh as can be. He he threw a little taper on, had some pop in his legs. But his running was really impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean. He looked fast. You break 60 of, now. Uh, Not 70. Like, so his, you had him over under 70 on like the four-year training plan. What are your thoughts now? Rich? No, I said six. I said sixty from I now until 70. the next. Time. No, 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 no. He could do seventy for sure. He could do seventy. Like, I bet if if we had Dylan do seventy and gave him like fifteen seconds rest, he could probably do that for like twenty four hours. <laughs> uh, but his total aggregate runtime was still not incredibly fast. None of the t running times were that fast here. So his aggregate five k was seventeen fifty three. That's like a minute slower than people were doing in Atlantic City. 45 mm -hmm. So what are we thinking? Slower. Is it just a ton of big dogs on course thrashing on stations, or was it just not a fast course? The, there's nothing ever in DECA that would lead me to believe that it is faster or slower than another one, especially with the anti on site. Like, I don't... Two laps every time. You like, didn't feel yeah. slick or anything? No, not really. Air Dylan wasn't mention... crazy stale or... No, and like the they had the AC bump in, so it didn't feel like okay. hot or anything. They uh, and like Dylan Menchie's like I thought my 5K felt so much faster because I think in there there may have just been something wrong about West Palm. Looking back, <laughs> the way that these times kind of ran that day, Jack. What are your thoughts? You were there. I think you had all the big dogs trying to get in their top mark, and I mean. How much faster was West Palm? How many sub thirties do we have there? Uh, just two, I think. Just two, and a lot of thirty lows, and then mm -hmm. some thirty highs, and that not, that's not too different. If you know, you add in Ryan Kent or Rylan in this exact race, it could be the same exact outcome. Yeah, I just I watched just it. Insert Dylan as a sub thirty guy this time. I watched it Sunday, and I watched it yesterday as I was doing machine work. And to my eye, I don't have metrics on this. I don't have stats, but to my eye, the first run looked so controlled. Like, Rich, you were suddenly in the front, and I never mm -hmm. see you do that. Mm -hmm. So I, it seemed like everyone went in respecting the race rather than blasting out. It's almost like everyone's learned their lesson, and they almost erred on the side of extra caution because there was no one blasting out in the run, really. I mean... You could say Max did, but even he wasn't running like outrageously fast. No, and that one was a little short. So like in terms of how it looked split wise, it was much faster than the rest, but it was shorter because it, the start wasn't yeah. like the exact. Just the strides. No one was attacking. No, but and that's what, like he said, I wasn't feeling like I sh needed to be in front, but I just found my, I, it didn't feel like anybody was going to go past me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was like, okay, I'm just here. I'm in control. I'm just going to run how I feel like I'm, I want to run. And it seemed controlled. So maybe that was the case. Maybe there was just no urgency on the runs right from the start. At that Atlantic kind of City, telling. you had a guy like Derek York take it out in 124. Ryland <laughs> went with them. Kent was a second behind them. Like, it, it was insanity. 124. It's like 1435k pace, roughly. And you guys were, what, high 130s this race? Even though all of you were there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 138. Just controlled. Yeah. So maybe that was it. Maybe it just... From the start, everyone was just kind of in this idea that this run feels good enough and that the splits and that, that the stations were where people were going to make it up. Because looking back at Dylan's different times, like yeah, his 5K in West Palm was 30 seconds faster and his time was 30 seconds slower. So he paid the price on a lot of the zones in the last, like the wall overs, the Ram Burpees weren't great for him, the... Assault bike wasn't very good for him. So I think controlling his run a little bit more allowed him to be like closer to 70 on the air bike rather than 80 and closer to 120 than 130 on Ram burpees. And the ball overs were, he was like a minute flat instead of like 118. So 
maybe just keeping it controlled for him allowed him to express yeah. his uh, uh, high end output on the stations, which he's good at. Mm-hmm. Right? His his ski was really strong, so I think just keeping it controlled on the running early, and he was running me down, right? Like I like I, that's one thing I'm, I'm looking back. I'm like I don't think I was running too fast because Dylan was running running me down, which shouldn't be the case generally. I've I've watched I think every deck of theirs been streamed and they stream it pretty much the same way so it's not like you're getting different views of the running this was the slowest looking running hmm. like watching world champs watching some of these other races I watch it and I think I don't know if I could hang here and I watch this one and you think I think I could run with these guys and, and not not that not that I'm projecting myself into the race but you can't help but think that while you're but watching you it are. while you're working out right but For usually sure. the runs look a little scary. Like when you in Atlantic City, when you were rolling, I thought early on, it was like, Derek's running so fast. Ryland's yeah. running so fast. And then in the second half, it's like, Rich is rolling. And no one had that urgency in their stride for this race. And and maybe that, like you said, this is people just figuring out how to stack the work in this race. But it was the first deck in a long time where I thought, no one's run looks impressive today. Dylan looked good, but he looked smooth good. He didn't look like twitchy fast. And sometimes people look a little twitchy out there for a mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair. And then the times reflect that like, yeah, 1753 for a total 5k and still being sub 30. I wonder if that's the slowest five. I would imagine that's the slowest 5k mm-hmm. that we've seen for some sub 30. I, I have all the numbers. Uh, slow as 5k total. Yeah. Um, because there's only, sub- he's only the fourth person to go under 30. Yeah. Uh, That's 1717 or something. 1804 Ryland 2023 Austin when he went 2909, which meant he went 1104 on the zones. That's disgusting. Jeez, he was jogging. What was Kent yeah. in West Palm? Well, actually I actually have West Palm right here. Kent, uh, I, I don't have uh, West Palm next to me. I have the other ones. Let me, but... let me pull that up. But yeah, so maybe there is... So what does that tell us about this race then? Like where where does running need to be? And how is it going to affect like the stations? Like what are, what is our takeaway on that? Seeing someone like Dylan, like and Dylan's main thing when we think about him is that he doesn't have that high end, right? Like he shows here that he does have high end when it comes to the station work as someone who might not look as imposing or as powerful. And his running still wasn't super fast. And that's something that we think like, can he, can he run with the best in this sport if he's not able to run like a 15 45 5k or something like that but it's I showing mean, he's he, only the four go ahead jack like he, can he run with the best in the sport he just beat the guy who got first and fourth at world champs last year head to head yeah who got fourth McGee. right yeah it's having just simmed i haven't run these but having simmed it the station work is significant enough that it's not a pure running race. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to say early on, this is going to be a lot like a stadium, but it's not. This is not like a stadium. A stadium still is a running race, running in stairs with short little bouts, like the box step overs are the closest we're seeing in sit ups to stadium. The other stations are just bigger and heavier and more costly. So I think you can get away with having a little less running. Now, mm. at a world championship, I'm not sure. When everyone's on their game, you're going to have to run low 17s, I think, to mm. have a chance in it. Unless you're doing outrageous things like 11-0 <laughs> for the stations. But he, I don't see any reason why he doesn't get faster. With his running or in just in, in yeah. deck in general? Yeah, isn't, the, isn't this turn, turning it up a little bit intensity-wise, tapering a little? These are all kind of new things for him. It's not like he put in an off-season block where he just tried to work on his mile. There's definitely a line, right? And this is something that I was I was stepping on that line as soon as the race started, mostly on my station end. I, and I kind of came in, I was like, I'm going to just be comfortable on the run and, and press into the stations because that's where I put a lot of focus on. And it was way more costly than I thought. I was on or over the line way earlier than I felt I was just because of lack of experience. Right? I just haven't been in that place. I haven't been. I didn't, haven't done a deck of fit in months since November. So what I thought felt comfortable wasn't, and then it was too late and then everything kind of suffered because of it. But maybe it is just about straddling that line, being familiar with what it is. And Dylan even said he kind of took his foot off of the gas, but he still had faster stations in the back 
three or four, uh, three stations or so. No, three or four than he has ever had. So maybe even keeping that under the line for the entirety of the race <laughs> is like how you how you should kind of do this. It, it's one of those things where like if you can comfortably go 140 on a ski erg or, or not on a ski erg on, on the rower, maybe a ski erg, but it, are you better off going 145 instead of 140? Probably because like you're going to save five seconds the rest of the race somewhere because you're a little bit fresher. And I think where Rich got to last year is he would go 42. Like he knew the line and he could get to get to the point where he could stay here. And I think Dylan probably could stay here early on. Mm -hmm. But the difference between here and here isn't much. And early mm -hmm. in the season, you touch it accidentally and you do, you can't recover in these events. I, I just really don't think you can make up time if you start slow, but you can't recover once you tip because it's such a high output event that tipping is it's death and when like where i was tipping led me directly into the assault bike <laughs> i was already <laughs> over and then like yeah. you can't even go slow enough for that to feel any to feel good i was asking kent on uh mile hybrid that about like uh what if i just like stopped what if i took 30 seconds and just like <laughs> walked just completely true just, stopping just took it interval style Seven stations and then three stations, 30 to 45 second rest. I don't think I do much worse. I think I might do better. That's so is there like a panic button, a parachute you have to hit where if you suddenly tip, you just go, boop. All right. I'm walking for 30 seconds. Is that enough to get you back under? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Cause yeah, I, mean, I don't know if 30 is enough. I don't know because the runs. I'm well, saying doubled. at first sign. At first sign, that would have been like sit ups here or something, oh. or yeah, or after sit ups. And so I if think you they... finished the run after sit ups, came into the next station and rested, took 20 seconds, did the station, took 15 seconds, and then got back to work. What would have happened? I think where that place is is as after the ski erg. If what they, if you if, skied a 220 instead of stopping altogether? Like you're still moving, you're letting your heart rate go down? Or do you think no movement might help a little better? I think no movement, especially on skier, because it's still going to be taxing. Full body core. Yeah, it's still taxing. So I think doing skier, because I was able to do skier kind of where I wanted to be in time-wise while feeling not great and kind of not pressing it. And I was still like 148 or something like that. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I was 147, 147s in... Uh, AC, you know, with momentum going forward, but kind of pressing here. I was like, let's just relax and just like finish this and got out in decent time. And I think if I just started walking, I think I'm better off. I, I think it would be absolutely hilarious if the reigning world champ just starts power walking during the middle of a race. It's like I'm playing it broke chess me, out here. I'm playing chess. Back. Yeah. And then if right where Breaker and Isaac, where they kind of came up and I just kind of like latched onto them, they're not, they weren't running that fast, <laughs> you know, where it's like uh, where I'd have to kind of jump back into it. Give myself a little bit of time to latch onto them and then die later. And then just be super embarrassed. Get onto the assault bike and just do worse. And still yeah. do like and still do like 120 on the assault two, bike. Two minutes walk now. out of there. <laughs> yeah. It's the problem with coasting on certain events. Like the the skier coasting is still bending over and compressing. Mm -hmm. And so you can't get maximum oxygen uptake during that because you're compressing and restricting. So it doesn't really help you. Assault bike. You can't generate any force when you're blown out, and so you can't recover even going slow. So you would have to walk. Or, or BK, what if we do the what the you and Cali strategy? Just lay, just, just lay on the ground for thirty plop. seconds. Yeah, it's, it's great. I step out of the ski erg and just lay down and, <laughs> and just wait for medic to come and be like, "No, no, I'm thinking out here. I'm good. This is part of the plan." Do you see teams doing that at uh, at High Rocks this year? I don't know. Did yeah, you? a couple teams did it. Like, oh, we man. saw it. We liked it. We did it. We we laid down during the rower. <laughs> like, darn right, you did. <laughs> Was well, thing during high, in high rocks too. Like you you because everything is is so controlled. You can kind of recover on mm -hmm. a run, on a row, on uh, like on burpees. It's the Euros. They they recover during burpees. They kind of take burpees off. Like there's places where you can get it back, but Deca, you're walking. Maybe I'll go out to have to time trial to do, to try that. Yeah. Maybe I will. Or maybe I'll go out to Fort Wayne race our race. Our guy 
Mar- Marcus Wallace, aka Debo, and just give it's him that walk treatment. Like that. Yeah, just just go five on, thirty seconds off, finish up the race. I like it. So, but Dylan, I think that he just did a good job of not putting himself over. I don't think he excels over that line. I don't think he spends much time in that anaerobic tolerance you know, lactic takeover kind of place. And that's really where for me, I need to be like consistently like drilling that and like feeling it and, and increasing that tolerance to do well in a race like this. And I, I hadn't done that. I don't think, I don't, I mean, Dylan could probably also improve if he spends time there, but I don't think he spends much time there. So I think he just rode that line and did well in the stations and brought it back for the runs and just held himself comfortably. He's just fit enough that that's good enough to get him sub 30. Well, if he, he doesn't spend much time there and then he decides to start spending time there. Everybody better watch out. Cause that's a scary thing. My guy you never t- know how that equation is going to balance. Right. You know, but he, he has an interesting kind of anaerobic in his training. Not that I'm intimately acquainted with his, his training, but you see the things he posts and movements, anything that requires strength is inherently anaerobic. Like a bench press is an anaerobic exercise. And a burpee is anaerobic. And he does so many lunges and burpees and things after he's been working at high end aerobic or low end threshold that we would instantly tip anaerobic on some of these these workouts he does. But he doesn't do it on the cardio as much. He does it on the station, on the movement. So it's not like he's doing an anaerobic interval session, but he's producing lactate. And he's doing it in a burpee format or a bear crawl format or things that are highly recruitive of muscle fibers. He's just not doing your type of spicy interval work. So his system can handle it. It's just in the past, he struggled to handle it at a high output of aerobic or anaerobic. And and I think he's gotten a little better at that. So like I think the groundwork was there for him. It was just in a different setting. Now, the way that I think of this is that if he's doing so much volume in these one things that would be considered anaerobic, right? Like anaerobic running could be anaerobic for somebody who's deconditioned, right? Like if they don't have the pathways there to get the oxygen to, to where it needs to go, it's going to have to produce energy some way and they're, they're going to produce lactate. It's going to suck. If Dylan's just doing a gazillion burpees, don't you think he's just like creating aerobic pathways into these muscles where people might not? have them typically that will tip people over and he's just like it can be aerobic through his through all of these movements just because he's so conditioned that way yeah it, it stands to reason that would work and he's it's a just psycho. with That's efficiency just nobody, wants, nobody wants to do that yeah if you've I mean, done you've... two thousand more burpees than someone next to you you're going to be more efficient at it and mm-hmm. you should have some sort of pathway built up as well to to compound that effect so yeah don't you see it in the CrossFit games? They're like, oh, they've got 150 wall balls. They're going to recover on this part. It's like, what just right. us in the hybrid air? It's like, you're recovering on 150 wall balls? What are you talking about? So I, I think they, they're just doing more volume. He's doing a lot more volume. I, I think it makes sense what you're saying. And it can work. It can clearly work because that was a really strong effort from him. It also goes to show how differently people respond, especially in the hybrid space. Like Rich and I couldn't be more opposite. You have to be doing high-end anaerobic work mm-hmm. in order to feel good at it. Mm-hmm. And if I get threshold work in, I am very good at high-end anaerobic stuff. I get directly, it's a one-to-one almost correlation. If I do threshold, my VO2 max work mm-hmm. skyrockets with it. And yours doesn't seem to pair that way. Mm-hmm. And so it's why I think you can see people that come in with so many different styles of training and do well is if they figure out their body, it works and they can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's, that's a good way to kind of put it. And for someone like Dylan, it's like, I don't know. I, I think he's just able to, I think it's just aerobic output is just so high that he's able to do well, no matter what. Maybe like he does have. Some of that anaerobic, I just don't even, I don't even know. I don't Hard to know. know. Hard Because he's know. still a mystery, right? Yeah. He's, he's an enigma. High Rocks Worlds didn't go great, and now he just takes everyone down in his first race back. It's like, 
you never know where you're going to get, but all I know is World Championships just got a lot more interesting for that guy now that he's sub-30. Well, and this is what happens when someone puts in a fantastic, massive block of training for a race and it doesn't go well. Like That work doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it just has to be allowed to come back out. You know, he was cramping before the race started, basically, in at High Rocks World. So he mm-hmm. didn't even get to access his fitness. So whatever result he gave us there was not indicative of the work he put in. And so he didn't have to reset. He got to pick back up from where he was. And if he did recover, if he, he truly took a day off, like this might be the most fresh he's ever been on top of all the work he's had. So sometimes those big failures at a championship just guarantee you're going to have an awesome next year because you did so well and now you're hungry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it for Dylan. It's not like we saw this like, oh, maybe this... Maybe everything has gone too far for him, right? Like that's that's a way that you can kind of look at his yeah. training and how consistent he's been, but also how he he really pushes it. He pushes it so heavily in training that it, most, like pretty much anybody else, would burn out, right? There would be some sort of tipping point, and they would not enjoy it. They wouldn't race well, and like me, it's like, oh well, maybe Dylan finally reached that point here at Worlds, but that's not the case, right? It was just an off day. He wasn't feeling well. Like there was, there's a bunch of different explanations that could have been the case for that. But it's not that he was training too much. He still knows his body. He still is training to the point where he feels he can and and still improve. And seems right. He physically looked another level up, like structure wise, frame wise. Last Hmm. year, he started to look like he had muscle in certain places. And this, this will start Dylan. This is going to sound. Like patronizing, I don't mean it that way. But you know yeah. when like high school kids, skinny high school kids start to lift, they start getting like blobs of mass someplace. Like, oh, their shoulders started developing this month. And this, they got pecs. That, that, that's how Dylan felt. Like he was still <laughs> his frame and he was starting to show bulkiness certain places. And yesterday he looked like the next level of athlete where it was all streamlined in a package. Like his everything's filled out to one more level up where there didn't look like imbalances. It didn't look like he was getting bulkier here and not here. He just looked like a really lean, strong athlete out there. Hit puberty. I wonder if we go back <laughs> and look at how he looked in like 2021, right? Th- that might be interesting to compare like mm-hmm. a live stream from then to now and see if it is like, oh, visually he is actually kind of stacking on some muscle. That's the other thing when you work out that much, like how well can you recover? How well can you keep on mass? But he seems to be, yeah, if anything, getting a little bit bigger, a little stronger. He used to be imbalanced in his thighs and hips. Like he was here and then he came out a bit. Like you see some cyclists. And now he's got like that upper body V going. And again, what, what do visuals mean? I don't know. But it seems like he has continued to adapt to his training load in a positive manner, which still defies logic. We've been waiting for the kid to tip for like two and a half years. Exactly. Exactly. What's that golden ratio in terms of visuals for a, a body aesthetic? Oh, I don't you know, know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's like a yeah, shoulder to hip. to shoulder. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he has it. It's like, I forget the number. It was like 2.7 or something. We'll find it. Well, let's get Dylan to send it over to us and see what his, his ratio Dylan, is. We need some measurements. 1.6.1. 1.6, but yeah, that was close. 2.4. Get out of here, Jack. It's a 2.7. I was even farther <laughs> off. Just like huge. And t- it's like a big bodybuilder. Just massive up here. Tiny little waist. Nick Riker runs the time that he runs. 30-30. That's where he is. No matter what. Lock it down. What do we think of Riker? Good on him. We used to say it in college all the time. I'd tell the high school kids when I coached track and cross this. If you can repeat a performance, it's not your ceiling. Hmm. Like It's not going to be your lifetime best if you repeat it again. Or it doesn't have to be. Like As soon as you hit the same time a few times in a row, you're ready to break through. Like I don't consider this a plateau. I consider this like you're building up momentum and then you're going to pop something. So if you can run 30-30 twice in two different styles of races, Like you've got a, you've got a low 30 and you are a high 29. That's what I believe. I think so too. I think so too. And the way he did run, he he hammered the air bike and then hammered the dead ball overs. Usually, if you hammer the the bike, he was fifty seven on both of those stations. Two. Yeah. Right. So he he can put out and was still able to keep moving. And then, then two eighteen, 
on his tank, which is about as good as anyone was that day. And that's another thing about West Palm. That sled was like, right on was 152. I'm just like, they, it was before they put the, the weights in it. <laughs> that thing was sliding all over the place. Where, where Riker needs help is Skierg. He really, that's like a big station of improvement. He just hasn't spent much time on it. And what did running. he do there? With transition 206. So he figures like 156s or something like that. Yeah. He just, which is interesting that he can assault bike. I usually equate has, those two to being good at the same thing. He hasn't spent time on the ski erg the way mm. that he needs to. And even when we were talking, like, his, like visually his form, I was looking at it wasn't, wasn't very efficient. So he, has, he can clean up a bunch of things pretty quickly if he spends more time on it. Well, if, if you look at the ski erg, I actually took the splits from the race. Um, he went 146 on his next run. Megiddo went 149. Isaac went 154. Rich, he went 151. Woo. So even if even if he's like five seconds slower on the ski erg, his net time, when you look at he felt a little fresher coming off of it, it might have actually played into his benefit. Yeah, but if his form sucks, he can do that same true. time with he's, way he's less leaving energy. something on the table at that point, I guess. Exa exactly. Yeah. yeah, like after... What was his time you said? What was his run time? 146. Okay. Yeah. Like, and that's good. That's really like a strong time after yeah. that. Dylan won 144. And that's when Dylan was like feeling it. He's like, all right, yeah. now we're, now we're rolling. He just, got, him, he just got himself in. Yeah. He's got himself in the first place and he's like, probably feeling mm -hmm. really, really strong about that. What was, uh, what was Riker after the bike? Uh, after the bike, Nick was 202. Oh, that's not that good. You know what your boy was? Uh, 208. <laughs> it's like seven minute pace. <laughs> What'd you do on the bike itself? Also not good. 118, 120? 121 according to the splits, but that's 121. All that well. resting? <laughs> I, I needed to rest further. I needed to stop. But still, that's not... If you told me I dropped to 10 RPMs, I'd say, all right, I went 210. <laughs> yeah. On the, on, not on the bike. I was 120 on the bike. That's what I'm right. saying. If I had dropped down as low as you went for a while on your cadence, I would have been approaching two minutes. I would have still bike. been on the bike. Yeah. It was, I, I slowed down for like three seconds. It was like two or three strokes. And I was like, oh, Lord. And then it got back. They just into caught it, it on film. <laughs> yeah. It just, people just saw it. I wasn't going that slow for that long. Okay. I had to get out of there. And then, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's a place. I mean, Riker probably could slow that bike down a little bit and put him at like, if he was like with 65 on that bike and came off and was able to run 155, right? Like that would put yeah. him, I think that would put him in a little better spot. So, um, but the, that he has the ability to put out like that is, is impressive. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's really unique. Uh, Joe Cotto, he went 148 after the bike, but he went 141 on the bike. So it's like anybody who runs fast, it's because they took it off, essentially. When I got Wallace, that was 146 counting transition on my bike. So you know you've been there. You've been. Yeah, there. I got to the point where I was counting tenths, like one, <laughs> one thousand, two, one thousand, a new tenth. <laughs> that, that ain't it. That's not what you want. No. Nope. Yeah, Joe Cotto is interesting, man. Like, his, like, did he have the best run? He did. It was 1738. <laughs> Which again isn't that? It's just like not that fast. Which he was faster the last time we saw him on his five k, I believe. Is that right? I'll have to go back and see. But yeah, his zones, uh, he seventeen fifty three in North Carolina, so he was actually really? about fifteen seconds faster this time. Who am I thinking? Man, maybe Colin. Mute me for a little bit here. Yeah, you can take a break. Take that thirty second rest we've been talking yeah, about. You're, thirty you're seconds over, full off. You're over the line. Yeah, he's out. Um. So let's just move. Let's move on, Magida. I mean, there's not a ton to say about Magida. He's coming in and not really. He's off of an injury. He did. He did this in West Palm last year. Went out in like ninth or tenth. Found his way. Moved his way up. Picked his spots and just ended up on the podium. And like, and he just did like nothing was remarkable except his burpees. Like he had a fast burpees, but other than that, everything was just steady fine. Eddie. Just fine. that's his mo. And when he's done that in high rocks, it's worked out. When he goes out fast, it doesn't. So that is his MO, right? That is definitely like, yeah. and that's where him and I, we, we are Even similar pay. in terms of athletes that way. Like if we are on, it needs to be our own thing. It needs to be move ramping up. Right. Like, so he kind of, he, they kind of, <laughs> there was never really a spot where he ramped up. I mean, his tank was good. He was passing people more yeah. than he, it was, it was like the second half of a marathon. Or when you're closing it down and making a move, you're maintaining the same pace. 
and it feels like you're accelerating, but really you're just resisting degradation. Last and with the, like a marathon in a hybrid, it's so miserable what's going on that simply passing people makes it manageable. Mm -hmm. Like that sometimes is the only difference between PRing and not like running the exact same splits, but moving past someone on it makes it like your whole mindset into the next station is different. You have, like you said, Dylan had momentum. You had momentum on the ski erg in Atlantic City. Feeling that versus not is sometimes just the only difference in the race. And looking at his last three zones, those were the only ones that would, like when, when athletes win these races, they'll, they'll be close to 60 on dead ball overs. They'll be under 220 in uh, the tank and they'll be 70 or seconds or under on the Ram burpees. Those were the only remarkable stations he had. Everything else was just chilling. So he really kind of sat and kicked. Yeah. Yeah. His so last three him, run man. splits. Him for having the discipline on that. Yeah. What were his run splits finish? At? After the, after the air bike, he won 157. Dylan went 154. Everyone else was like 202 to 212. Like, except Kodo. looking pretty. Except, yeah, except Kodo. But he wasn't. <laughs> Kodo was, he was going point. arms only. Like, Joe, use your legs. <laughs> yeah. Use your legs on the assault bike. Just cranking yeah. away. No, I'm and then running. Magita, Magita I went. Later, you know? <laughs> Yeah, Megiddo went 149 on the wall over or after the wall overs, then 154 heading into Ram Burpees. Um, both of those were better than most besides Dylan and Joe. And they're like, and it's like, okay, it's not like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Sometimes the average about. works out. Yeah. What's your question? Can you kick from the sled in as if your race is ending and then just get through the Rams? Has anyone yet sold out on that final 500 up until the point of not actually sprinting the last hundred, but could you run 70 second pace for that lad? Just sell out. Like if I throw up, I throw up. If I crash, I crash. It doesn't matter. And then it's just 20 bird. Could it, could you get through that? Are we, are, is that the next stage of people starting to sell out after the sled? I, I think so. I do think so. Like, I think this, the Ram, it's a little bit of efficiency and a lot of just wanting to because right? mm -hmm. if you're doing them fast as 70 seconds right it's like not a crazy amount of, of burpees but it doesn't always come down to that last run so i think people the issue That's is the, thing, the, sled, right? the sled just beats your legs up so bad yeah. that it kind of it takes a full lap to kind of gain your ability to actually run fast so it would probably most likely like 250 kick into the ram burpees i yeah. think that's probably the next step the, in the, the again, the only thing I can compare this to in stadium races, it used to be like you slow play it a little bit heading to the warning track because the Gauntlet. med ball slams and box jumps were so tiring. And then a time or two, you get forced into closing down into it, and they're the same because hmm. it's so close to the end. If you had to run another mile, you'd be screwed, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything in training like that yet? selling out prior to a ram burpee set and see what it does to you not um not with necessarily runs like if i do vo2 max intervals it's usually like three stations in a row so mm -hmm. it would be like ski assault bike ram burpees and it would be like less so it'd be like 250 15 cows 10 10 burpees just to kind of get completely in a row and see how it goes i haven't done anything where it's like kick hard into ram burpees so Probably just because I don't want to. And because Ram Burpees are, like I said, it's a lot more effort than I think mm -hmm. like actually like trained skill or ability level. I don't think it would matter until championships. I wouldn't mm. want to try it for the first time there, though. I've got a mile in two weeks or three weeks. I might try it. Let's go. That's the thing with a mile, too. You're like, you, you think you might try it, and then you're on that last run. You're like, I think I'm just gonna like the it. whole last run is the recovery from the, <laughs> yeah, the like slide. So kinda, my own probably can try. Yeah, where we saw, um, let me see if I have this here. Kent and Ryland with a couple close finishes. That's but what Kent did in the deck a mile was at in Atlantic City. He saved himself on that run. Yeah, he, he ran back. back. Yeah. You know, even even in that, like, how long does a run take you for a deck a mile? Like, like what is that 160 usually? Like, I don't know. 35 seconds, something. Right. So say with that plus, like, 60 seconds on, it's, it's still, like, a 95-second, like, sequence. 
which is definitely kickable if like you're Abdi Noor. Dude just kicks from like thousand out going crazy. But most like how long is like a long kick if we're gonna move into the track and field world, which where we live a lot? Like seventy seconds, seventy five seconds? Like if you you're, if you go you're up now, at that point, but you're still not like reaching all out until a couple hundred left. Right. Like five hundred five hundred meters for a kick is a big move. Big I'm talking like one notch below a kick. Like so if you're like running one fifty fives, what if you run a one forty five? That's not sprinting, but it's mm-hmm. selling out. It's gonna feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's doable. So basically basically with with uh, hacked deca and you have to take a 30 second walk and just start your kick uh, on the final run before the burpees so yeah you take it back there this is gonna where, work out fine where there where there could be like a hack i think the fastest way to do the sled is to push obviously and then drag not mm-hmm. not like row yeah but if you row that last one you'll save your legs a little bit it might give you a little bit less give, add, might add a little bit more time but it will save your quads a little bit, so you can you can you can run a little bit more. So maybe rowing that last one or two, and doing it with purpose, because I feel like the drag's faster. If you can drag and deal with the with the discomfort, you'll get done quicker. But your legs will feel bad. Yeah, I think outside of the skier assault bike rower, where people can just mostly ski and assault. I mean, ski and rower. People can always get better with form. Outside of those, I think the the tank return the backwards is the biggest place for improvement for people just in terms of tolerating the work. Mm-hmm. Just that same feeling, really, of hiking up a crazy steep mountain. And there are people who just get better at tolerating that, where they can keep a higher work rate and their legs fill up less. Like, I think you can get to that on the tank. I mm-hmm. think. It's got to be like a place where most people aren't spending an excess amount of time dragging it backwards. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a place that could set up the rest of your race. Well, Bracken, we were talking about the tank and we were just talking about kicking early. What if you're looking at it from Deca Strong scenario? Could you start kicking on the last two or three sled push and pulls and then go into Ram Burpees? I don't think that that's going to work out well. No, I don't think so. It's too I kick on I kick on dead ball overs. Yeah. And then I just like, because you can't go that fast on the tank. But that's like a separation it, kick. That's not like... A little bit. You're, you're going to hold Search. that pace till the end, yeah. Well, you can't hold... Like, no, the, go ahead. Uh, you can't hold that effort into the tank. You just got to slow down. Yeah. Right. It's like an OCR kick where we always said you have to kick from 800 to 400 in OCR because there's a gauntlet at the end. Can't 800 meter gauntlet. You, you mean from the start, like 400 meters at the start to 800 meters? That's where you kick? That's what it seems from, like. From 800 to go till 400 to go. Like if there's a surge to be made, like we saw with Botrys mm-hmm. and KBB, you surge into the festival area. You can't yeah. surge during it that well. No. And that's I guess that's your dead ball. It's like... What are you gonna mm-hmm. sprint while slow lunge walking the sled? No, you can't. So, <laughs> right, I guess dead balls. You're right. Uh, and that's yeah, that's a big separator, right? Like, and that's where you know you can le- you can really lose time in a fit. In a fit, you can lose a bunch of time in those dead ball overs, and that, it's a lot of effort as well. But like where I came in, I was like, there was no more effort to give, so I just had to kind of. And I tried. I was trying. I was like trying to move, trying to go, and I still just like wasn't. The coordinate I was like wasn't coordinated enough. I was just like dying. It's the walk at, between everyone's transition. It gets like it's footwork, it's coordination, and it's mental sharpness, and you just lose it. It's not even the work of picking it up. Because mm-hmm. people will get it off the ground because it's not that heavy. It's the three extra shuffle steps and a sigh in between each one. It's crazy to watch it, and yet you're in molasses when it happens. Mm-hmm. It's probably better to like turn and look at the competitors, see how they're moving, and maybe try to match somebody as opposed to having like your back to it. But that station sucks. I love watching yeah. David McGee do it. He has such disdain for the ball. He picks What's it he up doing? and flicks it. It's just, it just looks so light for him that he has to show the ball on every rep that you mean nothing to me. It <laughs> turns away and just flicks it over. He won't just set it over. He flips it. Just to let you know, I have more power than this needs. <laughs> and that's that's one of his things too. He's like, let's get rid of this stupid yoke, make it a hundred pounds, put it over your shoulder. Like, let's just let's let's do that instead. And I think that that would be fair. I would like, I would actually kind of like that. Newbie was funny with this too. Compete. Come but on, hundred? No, no, I, I wouldn't even bother. You that's can dunk. You can explode heavy. from your hips. If it's one fifty, then you're in trouble. Hundred's not bad. 
I said, I'll, that one I'll, I'll, I'll join Goofy Games if that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Newbie was funny with this because Jared's like 6'3", 6'4"-ish, I think. Mm-hmm. He's a tall guy. So he's like, yeah, the dead ball overs are great. I just picked it up to my waist and just like dumped it over. <laughs> he just like stood up and moved it all over the top. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that is a good way to do it. He had a 203 sled. We need to talk about him also, what he did after the race. Oh my God. Yeah. We, we, we will get into it. I guess let well, just do a quick shout out for Isaac Sanderson. This was, what, this was a, a Jack pick. Yeah. Jack was like, Hey, there's this guy hangs out with Rylan. He's Canadian. Yeah. He's yeah. He's been crushing gotta it. Give he's, him his due. Gotta he, give him his he due, man. The business. So got a sure did. shout out. Sure did. Yeah. He had a good back, like his dead ball overs and like he, and like his ramp purpose were good. He had like some gas. His 5k was like 19. Oh, don't want, you'd want to see that be a little bit better. And that's where he said he could be a little bit more aggressive on his runs post. He hammered the row. I hammered the row and it ruined my race. He hammered the row and was able to keep going. He had 144 with transition. With transit? Dang. That's, <laughs> that's, that's like, yeah, he's been hanging out with Ryland. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. Ryland went 142 at Worlds. That's the fastest split that I see out of any any road it's time so including gross. transitions. So he's going like, 130 here, something. Here's the secret. Just go insane way too early and just ha- and just see how it goes. Do you ever think when you look at these splits, what would my race be like if I ran 19 flat for the 5k? Like if you just decided to run a 19 flat, what would your race look like? Or would you not there, be able to crank like that because it's just not what you Richard probably do. be 30 flat or so. You could probably go about 11 <laughs> flat on yeah, I would so gain some time on the ski and the air bike, obviously, and I wouldn't fall apart that bad on the back. But uh, I don't know. It's just so much time. It's just so much time. It's like two minutes slower than yeah. what you I would You need like the running do. as your – Yeah, that, <laughs> right. That's your MO. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's – that's like a high rocks way of approaching this. Yeah. Isaac is going to be in Orlando in a few weeks, so. Good. Yep. I'd like to see more of him. Impressive. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he was great. He and he was a nice dude, good athlete. How old is he, Jack? Early twenties, I think. Early mid twenties. All these young kids coming up. Yeah. So good. Canada. Yes. So we have a little bit these of representation finally. This is an international event. Did yeah. you see uh, Noah Lyle's comment about the NBA World Champs? <laughs> so <laughs> let's let not let him hear about Deca. Come on now. Hey, there's, there's, last year we had, we had, uh, Chris Woolley out there. And Anas. International. Anas. I mean, American citizen, but, or it lives in America. I don't know. I don't know what his citizenship status is, but he lives in America. Um, let's scroll down one more. There we go. There we go. That's what we yeah, wanted to yeah. see. Look, and look, look at this Nick right versus below. Nicholas Riker. That... Look who's right below Jack Bauer on this list. It's disgusting. <laughs> Jack would be the greatest female hybrid athlete of all time. <laughs> he would have the record. At least I have the time um, bragging. So. That's a compliment. Oh, My take yeah. is that if you could be the best in the world as a female, you're a high-level male athlete. You're watching world championships, how many events could you have won? <laughs> None. All right. So saying you'd be the yeah. best at something is like not, it sounds <laughs> patronizing. It's a compliment. It is, I agree. And especially in yeah. this space, in the running space, the men are a little bit further. I mean, the what US record was 414 in the mile. It is 414 in the mile. Like I ran yeah. 414 into 1600 when I was 18 and was like, yeah. like not, and I was a good, but not like amazing. Usually you know? with men's versus women's pro sports, it's, High level high school is the same as professional women, just in terms of like the percent difference versus the mm-hmm. best. So I know that like the U.S. women's soccer team, they'll face elite high school level soccer team for for high school boys, and you know they're they're very similar ability levels and stuff. So is that right? Yeah. Well, yep. in endurance in running, it's a nine percent difference roughly. Yeah. In nine most world records, and so if you look at the hybrid space, Jack, you should be happy to be the number one. Yeah, yeah, ninety percent winner. Ninety percent winner versus like Rylan and Kent and Rich and stuff. Like nothing, nothing to be ashamed yeah. of there. What uh, how, what's the percent difference between yeah, the twenty eight, twenty eight or whatever Rylan's is? And... Uh, it would be a thirty one forty five, which is two seconds off my PR from last year. Okay, and so, that's yeah. where Meg Meg could be. Let's not jump quite to the women yet. Yeah, but here here's our list for the top of the deck. Uh, Fit standings with this race, we add Dylan Scott, 
slides into that third spot. Good for him. We have Nicholas Riker uh, right behind Nick Riker with the exact same time. So there's two two Nick's Rikers. So much board. better than Nicholas. Yeah, Nicholas. Like obviously, wow. Magida pops on to the seventh time. Isaac Sanderson pops off to pops into the ninth. Your boys tenth, and then Barely. we had hanging Barely. on, hanging on to tenth. Then newbies in there at twelfth, and was this was this Mark's uh, Mark Paulzine's? He's probably PR? run more decas than anybody. What was his? Was this he his was time for this? Flat heading in, I believe. Yeah, this was this weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. So yeah, he wow, that's really good. He moved that's up. really good for forty to forty four age group for sure. And that's the main. So additions. despite setting like a twenty second PR, Mark Paulzine dropped four places because he had five new entries. <laughs> all of sucks. which were in the top 12. So this was a loaded field. So in terms of what this could potentially look like for world championships. Yeah. And then we got this moves Jack Bauer to 20th. Right on that fringe. How do you feel about it? You're in my spot. This is, this is where I live, Jack. This is where you lived last year. This is where I live for, for high rocks. Yeah. So, so if I had to guess, Alphonse is not going to end up coming over. He'll probably do high rocks. Assuming he can get in. Because it's in Sweden the same day. Yep. I have same no with, idea Ruben. about Ruben, fellow Spaniard. No clue. Um, John Clark apparently is planning on doing elite and age group. So I previously thought he might fall out, but I, I'm you not counting that? on him anymore. Uh, John Clark. I didn't think you could do that. You shouldn't be able to do that. That's stupid. I think he's qualified for it. So well, Yeah, but I don't think that matters. I think that if you do one, you can't do the other. I agree. That's how uh, High Rocks rolls. That's how Spartan never did, yeah, unfortunately. But, I mean, if if he's allowed to do both, more power to him that he's able to qualify in multiple categories. But he's got Yankees got to figure this out. Like it doesn't make yeah. sense the way that, that they're doing the thing. Yeah. Like, oh, you have to run age group to qualify for age group because then, like, yeah, someone like say say John Howard, for example, wants to go age group. He has to have run an age group event to then qualify. It just doesn't make any. I know sense. Lawrence Taylor this week. This weekend, he decided to race age group because he's like, I'm not going to make top 20 elite, but I want to be able to compete at Decker Worlds. And there's no there's no elite first age group for mile and strong, right? It's just you're in the top 20. We're going to put you in elite and then we're going to roll down afterwards. There's no you go to right. a local event and decide your division. It's just kind of what it is. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going to be sitting right on there. I say Ruben and yeah. Alphonse are out. So they'll move, bump so you up to 18. So, so I know Marcus Wallace, he's going to get it. Very, very confident on that. Um, Everybody's about to get Wallace. Take yeah. the chain. And, and I've got the, the, as of yesterday, start list for Orlando. And I know that Glenn Race is going to be coming. So that's, he's, he's definitely able to do that. Um, for, for people who haven't done it so or who haven't qualified, Kyle Reed as well. Scroll down. He's, he was 32-something. Um, I think he just missed it earlier this year. So he'll... Mm, 32 high. 32 high, yeah. He's, he's got a, a realistic chance. Chaz Hatton, don't sleep on him. He's qualified in elite for deck a mile or strong before. And he's, he's, 32, just, he's one place behind me right there. So yeah, he, he can easily do it. Um, and then... Pretty much everyone else already has a mark, and but this is only who signed up so far. You could have a few others, you know, decide to do it, but I might be looking outside, looking in after uh, Orlando. It's going to be like within one spot. You're either yeah. going to be the the. It last just sucks because I've run thirty one forty seven before, and that was my opener this year thirty two twenty one, and it's like I know I was in better shape, and you know I I ran Sacramento, and then a month later ended up at uh, Anaheim. I didn't end up showing up there. And, you know, John Clark and John Howard, who I beat in Sacramento, ran faster in Anaheim. So it's like, in theory, I probably could have been a little bit faster, but oh well. I mean, I, I got hurt. It's on me. I didn't have a chance to race, so we'll see what happens. We're going to see. How about you, Rich? What, what are your thoughts? You, <laughs> I'm assuming since you're going to Madrid, you will not be going to Orlando as well? I really didn't want to go to Orlando. And I don't know. What do you guys think? If you're me, right in the middle, I'm going to be – I have the 10th spot right now. If Marcus Assuming, Wallace goes 31 flat and kicks you out. like Yep, which is definitely on the table. I think Marcus could go, yeah, as fast as Colin, right? Like, he should be. He could, he could also go 31. I think he's somewhere between 30, 30 45, and 31, 30. 
BK, you've seen it. You've felt it. Okay, so I, first first of all, last week I said I think I'm in 30-30 shape. Sure about that. That was a miss. That was a miss uh, spoken phrase right there. You both looked at me and said, 30-30? I said, yeah, I think so. That is not the time I meant to say. Just so we're all very clear on that. <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean to say? Mean is that? Yeah. I thought I could run 31 30 mm. if the stars yeah. align right now. But no, not 30 30. I had like two okay. or three messages like, dude, if you think you're in 30 30 shape, stop saying you're not racing until you're fit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, right. I, know, I can't run 30 30. They're like, you just said you can run 30 30. So I went back and listened. I did. That was not correct. <laughs> and after watching this weekend, 31 30 might be a pipe dream too. But I think that Wallace could, I mean, if he was in Orlando, I think he can I think run. Might third, I think he can run what Nick did. I think he can run thirty twenty. I don't know if I'm he just, will, but my guess is his his ceiling is thirty fifteen, and his floor is thirty one twenty. I think he's somewhere around yeah. Riker and uh, and newbie. That's where he sits. Mm. Yeah, we've mm-hmm. historically seen that the road shows are a little bit slower. So if yeah. you think he's in 30-30 shape, you take 30 seconds off. Now he's like right where Rich will be. The road shows have the D-ball over shoulders, which is certainly faster. I, yes. He sent me a picture of the venue, and it, it's like a track. It's like an indoor track. Oh, really? Man. Yeah. yeah. Cracking. You gotta what get would the you be wearing there, Rich? Woo, on a track, what do we got? What do they call the dragonflies, probably? Get into the pop into the wood station on the step overs. Be about pew, pew, pew. Um, dude, I tried on the so I had the Rocket X on Rocket X2 mm-hmm. and was doing my warm up in that. Felt great around the curve and like the turns. I was like, this is this is this feels amazing. I'm gonna I'm going to do this. Push the sled in them and it was just slipping a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like in the the sled in the warm up area felt fine, but then in the actual zone zone, it was like slipping. I was like, oh, I gotta take these off. So then I popped on the uh, Hyperion Tempo, and man, going from Super Shoe down, what a bummer. If you're going to have to wear it, you want to warm up in like a Clifton. And then yeah. put that <laughs> exactly. You don't want to warm up in your, in your X2s. The Cielo Road could have worked, though. I wore those for uh, the relay, and that could have worked for sure. But still, How are a- the stepovers in, the, in a Super Shoe? That's fine. That's fine. I really think the most stable super shoe I've ever run in is still the Meta Speed Sky. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's so stable. Like my next have... stadium for sure will be in that. And my Deca Mile, I'm going to wear that for. Yeah, I think I, oh, that would work. That'd be nice to have a little bit of a pop in the mile for sure. I think the, I saw some Endorphin 3s out there. Magita wore them. I saw them on a couple of other people. I didn't bring them because I'm a dummy. I was just like, how many shoes am I going to bring? But I should have brought those because I would have preferred to wear those i think so real quick back to marcus i'm at that mm-hmm. plasma athletic center right now looking at pictures that is a track and it's a u.s olympic and paralympic training center as well or lo- one of the locations that they have that's legit this, yeah this no has turns. The potential to be very fast i mean no angle turns yeah no 90 degree right maybe yeah. i should get out there look at this yeah why not I'm, that's, that's you can like drive that six lane blue indoor track. Six lane blue's fast. Blue is blue's fast always color fast. for tracks. It's like Boise we State. Know this is true. Yeah. Drake. Yep. The Drake track. Drizzy. So I, <laughs> Drizzy Drake. <laughs> how, how you think he'd do a Deca? I mean, he's, he looks like he's a pretty powerful, dude. I bet he could. I bet he could ski. Play he basketball. Best would be the strong. Yeah. Probably. He's like yeah. He's like tall. He's got some got some meat. Um. Yeah, so I don't know. If you guys were me, what would you do? It would come down to one question. Are you confident running for a world title from the slow heat? Like, I don't I don't know. <laughs> like, I, if that I, answer is not yes, you have to go to the, the uh, another race. What if I just ask to get put in that fast heat? Do you think that would be <laughs> out of line? Like, Is what? there a grandfather rule? Can you get grandfathered in as the reigning world champ? We can make it a rule and not, not even to bump somebody out. Just have it be 11 people in the first heat. They, there was 14 in the heat that I just ran in for PA. Like it was 12 last year. Just, just, just put me in. 
I better. think that as the person who does nothing but complain about Hyrox's qualification system, it's very, very hypocritical to just ask for your way what? <laughs> into this heat. But what I also figure? support trying to find out, do I have an automatic entry as the rainy world champ? But if you think you can win from the slow heat, which I think you can, I would just train through. If you need to be top 10, go run on the track. <laughs> Do you want to know what I think you would need, Rich, for, for this? You would need a healthy Mark Godet to just go out with you because he's probably the fastest runner in that 11 to 20 range. That would be bad for me. That's true. Yeah. But, or, you know, like Jared's going to push the pace. Joseph Cotto, you can run. Grady's really good. But I think if you're legitimately trying to podium or win again, you, you need a sacrificial lamb, kind of like uh, Kenya does in, in a lot of the track events. You just need to have someone go out and pace you. Mark Godet's probably the guy I would think of. If I was to do a race again this weekend, I would just row way slower, do re- reverse lunges way slower, and just be so much more controlled, and take off 30 seconds of my time, and just move into eighth or whatever, yeah. right? Like, it's not like I'm going to jump into the top five. It's just like, I just need to not... Just do a Megiddo. Yeah, that was, that's exactly... I should have done that previously. This previous week, really, that's what I should have done, especially without any real training leading up to it. Brian, you were saying that Rich, Rich needs to do the least amount of work to get into the top 10. He did. I he did, did exactly now that. Now he's in a predicament. I did the most amount of work to, yeah. do the, to get the last spot. Yeah. I said this about what? Least bang for your Hunter luck. earlier before High Rocks Worlds, and I'll say it about you now. If you win DECA Championship, it's because of this race you just ran. Hmm. You got it out of the way. Yeah. I, I mean, you pushed I'm not... it. You, 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 you overcooked on a station or two and realized, okay. It's like Hunter going out like crazy in LA. All right. I right. tried it. I right. know. Exactly. And this is like, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that's right. This is not far off from where I was last year at this exact same, same time. Yeah. You know, this is almost an identical race to West Palm. It, you've also got a, you've got to take into account that Ryland was not here and Kent weren't here and they're, you know, 30 plus seconds ahead of everybody on the leaderboard. And they were the other two who shared the podium with you in DecaFit last year. So it's like, I'm sure you would have liked to have seen how they might've approached it a little bit differently in this race. Cause you kind of unexpectedly were thrown in the front in this one. You might've played your cards a little bit differently had they been in here, but nothing you can yeah, really do know. about it at this point. I think I'm just going to, Ask what's going on fast heat. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Like, I can't. I like. I need to do well in Madrid. Yeah, straight yeah. up. You I know, mean, your high rock season is over if you don't. If like before it even it started, could actually be over if I don't get in that Chicago race. Yeah, you know, which is just garbage. who's in Chicago from North America. Um, right now, I don't think it's Hunter's just, racing it. It's Hunter, Magida, Kent. But I don't think Hunter's doing races until next year. He says a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. I've heard he's I've heard multiple things. Okay. Can you pull up the mile? Of course. I want you to, to, to say what's it gonna take to get in in the mile? To get oh, into the top twenty? Considering racing. At the end of the year, what's it gonna take? Well yeah, it, it, there's a there's a, a drivable mile in three weeks for me here. They got Collins time up. Did they get Oof. did they get Wallace's time up there yet? Yep. No, because he's away. Where's VJ at? Cause... He did one this weekend and he might miss. He's like 20th. He would actually be like right here. But Man. with this group, like, again, John Clark, if he wants to get the triple crown, would have to go age group. And maybe he does elite and age group again, but I don't know why. Yeah. For, like, I think some of these people will do. This is a depressing um, list. Why? Because you look at it and you're like, all right, we have guys that you feel like you might be able to get into the top 20 around. Okay, you just got to break 19 minutes. Well, Rich is 18.32. And he's not even well, fast heat. Geez. So then well, let's look a little down. Dylan's 1850. Like, where is the time that the average person thinks, yeah, I could scoot in and get in the top 20? Because I'm better. Than, oh, no, there's Dylan and there's Rich and there's Polzin and there's oh, there's just a lot DJ. of... Yeah. But also there's a lot of other people, like, you know, there's people on here whose names you might not expect to be. It's just like, right. 
So whatever course you get. Yeah. A little bit of that. Kevin Gregory. What do you what do you what do you got in your BK? I don't know. If I mean my my confidence says that if I ran a twelve forty five plus a six minute, that's eighteen forty five. Yeah, that doesn't sound crazy, but that's. Then you look at the people that are around that, and you realize, yeah, you probably can't do that. The the six minute part with the stop and go and the U turn, most likely, that's going to be the hard part. Honestly, I feel like people overestimate what they're going to do on it. So I don't know. I, I I think that breaking 19 would be fantastic. I'd be very happy. And that would put you just ahead of Meg, top top female in the world. Yeah, you could be what percentage off of from the top male. Yeah, then how how would Jack and I possibly lose if we were both better than Meg and we're on a doubles yeah. team together? Mm-hmm. That's what we're waiting for. That's so what I don't we know. need. What do you think it'll take to get in at the end of the year? For elite? Mm-hmm. I think that this will I think this will roll down considerably. I think really? that yeah, I think that we could be looking at like yeah, like right now here, like nineteen nineteen. So I think yeah, nineteen flat. I would say nineteen flat. Because ninety percent of winner off the uh the world record, by the way, is an eighteen fifty. So Meg's getting really close to that. And that's probably around where the the guys are going to finish off of the six off of uh, the 1650, 1650 something. something. Yeah. Yeah. Meg is good. We know that <laughs> I'll probably do a strong this week. Woo. And a, a, a Sima an official Sima strong with that Schwinn. No, I have an assault bike now. You do. Hmm. Yeah. That's what kicked off all this double threshold training. Let's not Mattel go. Brand. Yeah. Is it not a PB extreme situation? I don't know. Unfortunately. I don't know. I don't know I if, might, I, if it was, I'd I'd be my own bike, BYOB to the to this mile. You got you got a regular old assault bike, like a pro or whatever. Just not one model older, just assault bike. I don't know what do they call it? Class, not classic, but I forget. They're like yeah, okay. Not the elites which they have at the events. Not, not the, the new one. The new one's a Belcher, like that something X maybe. I forget what that one's called. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about ladies. Yeah, let's do it. Let's... Oh, with Jared Newby, we need to talk about him. Oh, yeah, yeah, real quick. Jared Newby not only put himself in the top 20 of Deca Fitness first time ever with a 31-20, and he had a mishap on the sled. He, he bounced early, then came back, and his time was still really fast. He went um, 203, and he stopped after four and had to go back or something. Like, ridiculous. Yeah. So, came back and did the Go Ruck division. And ran like 35 mid or something yeah. like that. What was his 5K? Well, that's a good question. I'll pull it up. And he looked like he was dying on those burpees at the end. So whatever pace he went out, he probably held his, his same normal pace just with 40 extra pounds for like most of the race. And what was the record? 38, 39 something. <laughs> Preston his, Burnett, his 5K was uh, 2035. <laughs> That's like pretty good. What? <laughs> yeah, his, his ram burpees were about two minutes too, because I mean it's just like an awkward thing to have. Yeah, but everything else was rolling. Step overs in like forty-seven seconds. <laughs> you think it helps you on the skier? It could. I've never wore a pack on the skier. Have you guys ever done a loaded? No. no. I think it depends on how your form is. If you're like locked into like really driving power up front and throwing your chest down, what, what was help? the skier time? I'll I'll compare it. Uh, two oh seven, two oh seven, and yeah, he sucks. yeah no uh, his skier one fifty nine. So yeah, wasn't wasn't too much off. Oh, not too much different. Not too much, different, but different. So shout out to Jared showing that he is the go ruck athlete. All these other ambassadors they have don't hold anything. Honorable King. To Jared. He Except is the the, the goofy real game, deal. the goofy games goat. Yeah, he's the greatest loaded runner on the planet by like a lot. It's like it's not, not close, like, not yeah. close. Like fifty percent better than anybody else. Maybe Jack, what do you think? Is there? I don't know, fifty percent, but I don't. I don't think. <laughs> like Kent always talks and says he's the best heavy carrier in the game. He might be second. He's not touching Jared Newby. And well, how do you even know about Kent anymore? 
He, just now against my boy, but he wasn't the best heavy carrier in the game when he was in OCR. Oh, damn. Is that true? I mean, split wise, they were taking splits back in the day and he wasn't. Yeah. Like I'm Woods not... surprisingly would have some of the fastest and Hobie that like, you just need to move with the weight at that point. So nowadays I'm sure he's really good at it, but like, how would we have, how would we even know? What is... I remember he did a Utah race where they had a heavy carry like right away. And he went from like 10th to first. Oh yeah. He smashed that and... one. That's right. But, yeah. Like he's I was like in the first, that was like the first like mile and a half though. Well, that was that's the data point. Everyone's the best in the sport. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. not an appropriate time to hammer. Yeah, I guess if that's true, there's there's something to back it up. Yeah. He says a lot of stuff. He says things, but is a heavy carry the same as a ruck? No, no, I wouldn't think so. I don't think so either. Moving with weight and like Jared just like Newby, and he's you're, had- you're, the best mobility in OCR worlds on the strength legs, where it, it's like carry this rec bag up a hill and come back down, and he's like two minutes faster than everybody. Carry this tube sock, <laughs> two of them, double tube sock carry. Yeah. Shout out to Jared. Move on to the ladies. So we saw for the first time Meg Jacoby in the Deca Fit Arena, and we talked about like how fast she, could she go. And what she did, she went faster than anyone's ever gone in the history of DecaFit in a proper event. 32-27, setting the record, breaking it by almost 20 seconds? 32-44, yep. And a pretty dominant performance, basically in the lead after lunges, I think, right? Yeah. And then she looked like she took her foot off the gas for a bit. Now, I'm sure you've talked to her, but she cranked out those ram burpees in a way that mm-hmm. you can't do unless you have some juice left and in the middle on the assault bike on the farmer's carry on the sled it didn't look like she was selling out i think that's she, an appropriate way to do it i think so Her. too but it, it looked like she throttled off a little bit i'm saying yeah. there's more her, her ram burpees she did them in 58 seconds i think like, <laughs> we've already complained that the weight's just too, too light, light. It, it, it is. You need to do 33, in my opinion. Definitely. Just, yeah. When you get someone like like Meg or Alondra out there who are just like straight up strong, yeah. like full stop, like 22 is actually nothing. Like, imagine doing devil's presses with 10 pound weights in your hands. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Her form the, was great because she's pulling it up so high that as she started down, it continued up and she ended up clearing her head by like eight or nine inches on every rep. And on the men's side, no one's clearing by more than like two or three centimeters. <laughs> right. And she's yeah. still going faster than everybody. I think they need to clean that up personally. The This weekend was bad. There were some yeah, people that it, were it not clear. It was really their head. bad on, on some of the burpee extension. Clear In terms of clearing the head? Oh, yeah. Just like the bent over and like bent knees. I just knees think it should be a wall ball with... target. If you're going to yeah. do ram burpees, just set the wall ball target to like six feet. You just have to tap it. Hmm. Otherwise, like, I don't understand why they can't just do it full, like, lock out, hips open. Like, why that's can't what it should just, be? Yeah, it's either all the form or none of it. Like, visually, you can tell when someone shorts that. You can see, yeah. like, it's not that big of a deal. It's, or it's the like problem. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's hard to see if there's clearance and if someone's hips are open. Because if you're looking just for the clearance, like, that's what you think the rep is. And people's hips could be completely closed. Right. You know, where if it's just like standing straight up, if they're not straight up, like you can tell, like yeah. it's, it's more of like a, a holistic view to judge rather than just like one space that you're looking for. Yeah, it's it's one flawed line of thinking that OCR and hybrid has, which is it's too hard to judge perfect form. So we're going to reduce yeah. the standards and make it simpler, but that makes mm-hmm. it more convoluted. Like you think about yes. gymnastics, if you have to be like this, if there's a toe out of place, it like it's a red flag. You can see it really easily. Like, oh, their toes came apart. Their feet moved a little bit. But when it's like OCR or like that ram burpee where you can be as weird as you want, it has to clear the top of your head and your hip open. It's actually harder to see. Yeah, the stricter the standards are, the easier it is to judge. I would agree on that. So we'll see how they. I don't know if they make any different. Like, I don't know. But uh, I was looking at the air bike because I, I agree. Like Meg looked like. Sh- she was having a harder time on that air bike and Vivian is strong on that air bike. Yes. So Meg finished in 133, which was like over 10 seconds faster than what Tara did last year yeah. at Worlds. And when Tara she said the notorious record. for and, separating and that's what Tara, on that. Right. That Tara 
is strong at that, picks that in terms of the race to make her move. And when she did that, like 140 mids at Worlds, it's where she blew the race apart. And Meg was all by herself, did 133, no one really to race, just being chased a little bit by Viv. So, like, we kind of finished and we're talking like, yeah, she's like, oh, I need to get better at that salt bike, I need to get better at that salt bike. And we're looking at it's like, hmm, not sure. really. <laughs> you don't really need to get that much better. Can, but you it's not your can. weakness. Nope. And when it's something that's not scaled, right, like, it's just going to be slower for the women. Like, yeah. and that's one thing about Deca. It's, it's really not very scaled. They scale the weight on lunges, farmers, and ramp burpees. But like lunges, like how much time is it actually saving them compared to, to men? Like probably, probably nothing. And the box and uh, the med ball is a little bit lighter as well. But the things that are going to be costly in terms of time, like the ski, the row and the bike, they don't scale that at all. Right. 500 meters for everything. Yeah. I, I looked at her splits compared to my fastest time. And besides lunges and ram burpees, both of which she was faster than me at, she was within two to three seconds of every single machine that I did. I'm like, really? how is she? She is moving. And that includes yeah. the air bike. Like, just, she's moving. Well, Jack, you're a machine beast these days. We got to get you back out there. It wouldn't be uh, like that now. I'll be a lot more improved, but uh, we're talking about Meg right now. Yeah. So, I mean, she just was controlled. She had it the whole time. Like the way that her stations kind of stayed within where you figure someone in the elite range would be shows that she did a good job of like managing her her effort. So maybe there's a little runtime here. If if she had to do this over, maybe she'd be a little bit more aggressive somewhere else. And you know, if Lauren Weeks is in this race, like her run probably would have been a little bit quicker up front. But what's that do to her row? Yeah. Or, well, Tara's pretty con Tara's she, pretty She does the Magita method. method. Yeah. 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 Like Lauren Weeks is she's gonna be out there hammering. So overall, I mean, what's there to say? Meg is just continues to impress. She just brings it when it needs when it's time to. She has she now has Deca Fit World Record, High Rocks World Record, Deca Mile World Record, Deca Coed Teams World Record, High Rocks Women's Doubles Record. She has five world records, and then like so, what else does she need? She needs Coed, High Rocks, Mixed Doubles, Deca and Strong. strong. Deca That's Strongs. It gonna be a, an ask with carly yeah it's gonna, be, it's gonna be tough especially with that time like that i'll just like i wouldn't doubt if meg wins world championships but that yeah. time is just really is just like crazy yeah. and it's what it should be if your sport is well filled out body yeah. type differentiators will matter like you'll yeah. need the strong man strong woman type frame maybe not maybe a strong man but you need you're gonna need a big massive powerhouse frame to win a deca strong title or set the world record eventually unless they keep it up keep it as the way that it was in atlantic city they make it the deca deca strong 400 the 400 matters mm -hmm. that 400 is a game changer when you got some dudes who are 250 in the mix you drop some super shoes into the mix then trying to get <laughs> out and transition <laughs> for sure um pull up the so, overall leaderboard rich it's crazy how different it is for okay yeah we'll pull, we'll pull that up yeah Let's go. Let's talk about. So, Meg, I mean, like, what? It's her first go at it. She wins by close to a minute, sets the sets the world record. She's just going to be fun to watch when it comes to her. And uh, I would love to see her, Michaela and and Lauren, in one race. Not sure if we're going to get to see that in Deca Fit. Sweet, maybe ever. It's just not. Yeah. Maybe ever, right? But where she is now, there's definitely time to improve. I wouldn't doubt that she would be under 32 here in the next. She's doing Orlando. So yep. we'll see how that goes. But, you know, again, it's about that line. Like if you, if she tips at one spot versus another, but. Yep. How hard did she run? Well In terms of like did her effort. back on the run? I, I think she's pretty consistent. Jack, did you, do you have the women's splits? Um, no, I don't. I was actually pulling up the Orlando list to talk about that. But, okay, cool. Yeah. It, I mean, I think where she did a good job of, like she held it together on the row. Uh, and the ski, like those are areas where she was just putting in the appropriate effort where she needed to. I don't know. I mean, to to finish these stations the way that she did, I don't think she overdid her running. Maybe there's a little bit of running to to execute to be a little bit faster. But I think all in all, she, it was pretty controlled. Which is something. Vivian uh, Futo finishing second. This is the 
fourth fastest deck of fit time Ever. of all time, yep. I'm pretty sure. So Vivian keeps getting better and better, and she's basically by herself from yeah. basically since when Meg was by herself. Hardest way to run is someone pulling away from you. So for her to run that time in that scenario is very impressive. Mm -hmm. And she beat last year's second place finisher in this event. So that's got to be a confidence boost for her. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. fourth place at High Rocks Worlds as well, like Vivian, she, she's on the rise. I mean, if you're looking at it in terms of who will, I mean, I don't know. The podium's going to be pretty tight if Lauren does show up. Podium's gonna be tough. Podium's gonna be tough, and like she will be fighting for that podium spot for sure. Yeah, because we have we'll have five to six athletes, and that doesn't go into three. Just like on the and men's side, three, you have five that does not now. go. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, and just in general, like her machine is really strong. She's one twenty nine on that bike, and again, finished well sixty eight. I mean, she looks like she had a little bit of time on the tank where she could improve on the ram. She could probably improve a little bit. So. Uh, she could be close to 33 flat or under here in the next race that we see her in. And this is the first time she's done. This is her first decade this year, right? This year, yes. So, was, was that the fastest bike split pretty much ever by a woman in a fit? It might be in terms of the elite field. Like, well, what, I think what did Carly do? Carly what did Alondra do? I think Carly actually was faster. I think she was 127 or something. Let me pull that up real quick. Okay. Yeah, Carly was 127. Regardless. But also running like way slower. Yeah, Vi you know? Vivian beat her by two and a half minutes. So right, right. <laughs> Not taking like anything away from Carly, I was actually impressed with her Same. result. She did well. Yeah, thirty-five fourteen is a really solid time. Forty-one. Yep. Forty-one. Sorry. Um, yep. Where she is her first time into an event like this with this much high-end running is rock solid. You know, she didn't over. And for someone like her who's so com who who's obviously a competitor, right? Like, and I'm sure she wants to win. I'm sure she wants to be the best. And in order to win and to be the best, you have to go out with the leaders to be there. And she's, she's just like showing restraint. She's like figuring out where she needs to be running her own race. Like she really wasn't a factor in this race at all, but she was staying steady and continuing to, to move forward and doing well in the stations where she does have an advantage and yeah, put her, put herself in the top 20. Yeah. So, so did nine women. So, oh wow, okay. Yeah. Only we'll eleven of the previous twenty top twenty people are still in there. I said seven before the race. We might see, and it kind of felt like eh, I don't know. <laughs> like no, nine, yeah. nine, nine. Nine it is. Oh, sorry, eight. Emmy Cross just missed it by uh, a few. So it's it's eight, but eight. five of the top ten is brand new, and then three of the eleven to twenty are new. We can we can pull that up and just shout out to Chris Roglowski coming and taking care of business, making yeah my podium predictions the correct. Podium predictions. Rack you think to win though. In jest, <laughs> after saying that Meg was going to break the world record, that's yeah. Ted. Then I said Meg was going to choke. He was he was yeah. zagging. He was zagging. It's, it's just our monthly game of what could Chris do if she focused on something. Probably not as well as she does when she's not focused on something, you know. But yeah, thirty four. Life is the goofy games. <laughs> oh. <laughs> for sure just never quite totally prepared but chris has that ability just to kind of go to that place and like we said we talked about the her, her ability to be tough and like how well can that translate to something that um where it's mostly energy demands that will be your restraint and she did a good job she was continuously pushing forward being in front of alondra and alondra was kind of chasing her a little bit and they had, they had a, a good battle going on but Chris was just a little bit strong. And uh, Alondra hasn't, her running isn't where it needs to be. Uh, I don't know. Like she hasn't been putting in a ton of time uh, for various reasons or, or whatever it is, but she just didn't, she, her fitness in terms of running isn't where it has been in the past. Yeah. Let's look at this top 20 though for, for world championships. I'm willing to bet since High Rocks, one of their majors is in Sweden the same day. You're going to see Michaela Norman, who's from Sweden. She's probably not going to travel to, to the U.S., she'll stick over there, and yeah. then Viola as well. She's mm -hmm. in the top fifteen. I imagine she'll stay in Europe and do that. So that slides two people: Annie Schiller and Nicole Miracle. Potentially Actually three, right? Who else? Oh, sorry, up into the twenty because Viola's the, no, in no, there twice. In, in, from from heat two to heat one, gotcha. kind of the gotcha. same same uh, little exercise you did for Rich. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll be interesting. 
And then Carly's only one spot away from that. And you've got like a ton of talent in that 11 to 20 range. You think Nicole will come to DECA, DECA world as the I don't know. 11th seed, 12th seed, 10th seed? I mean, she grew up in Texas and it's pretty easy to, to get there from Colorado and like, it's not about that if... though. It's within a week of Spartan World Championships. Oh, you're in right, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. And like, yeah, she like she's not going to win any money here. That's true. Yeah, like podium, like podium project, like the best. What's the best you think she could do? Mm. Without preparing Six for eight. it, nine, oh. <laughs> ten. <laughs> if if she doesn't prepare, even if she, she, she a little could bit. be, she could be. Even top if she's in three, nine. if she's in three K shape, for yeah, yeah like yeah. I think if she prepares for it, she could be top five. Uh, I, 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 no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you, so. You think she's beating Meg, Vivian, Lauren, Chris, and Tara, Tara like she's not, Alondra, she's not, Alondra. Alondra. Was really good. I didn't say she'd beat the top five. I just said she could be top five. You got to beat somebody. Damn. Well, maybe she's fifth. I, all I know is that she, she, wh- wh- how how far is she off fifth place right now? Thirty four oh seven, and she went thirty five twenty nine uh, without one twenty one, a minute and a half. It's a big deal. Maybe I don't With know. No ability on the machines. Yeah, if she pre- if she actually prepared, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If she prepared, if she started right now and went and did a Rich Ryan build to Worlds, she could be top five. She's not going to. She's not even yeah. going to show up in race because she's, Abu Dhabi she's got is one week. dollars to win in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So yeah, I'm playing the could game. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. It's just looking at frame, and I don't know. I don't know. Shout outs to Stephanie Hillman out here. Yes, she's at, she's in Colorado. She had an amazing race, getting fifth in this field, and like 35, 13 is almost a minute PR. We talked about her a little bit in the previous episode where she was the fastest overall age group finisher at in Atlantic City last year. Mm-hmm. And like she kind of toes that line between being um, pro and age group. And it shows like that she just belongs finishing yep. fifth in that field, which was super strong. So awesome. She's Thanks a good runner. She's a, really, yeah. she's a really strong runner and she's been – and she puts some focus in this area and I hope and – I, and we should see her in the fast heat in Dallas. Like she belongs there for sure. Uh, I it, I might have my number wrong, but I think there were 18 women who went sub 38. Is that does that sound right? Oh wow, really? Let's like see in where the race. Stopped. Not not on the leaderboard, but in the race. Right. Michelle had a PR, Emmy was up there. Stephanie McChesney, she'll get bumped in. Sub 38. Yeah, wow. Yeah, 37 something's not doing it anymore. No. Julie Best was she had something happen to her on the tank where it was. Yeah, what crazy. happened? Suddenly she was just out of it. Yeah. She came in and there was no tanks available. They don't have the, all the number of tanks. You just assume that it's going to be spread out enough by that point. Like I had the last, t- I came into the tank, I don't know, eighth or ninth, and I had to go, go all the way to the end for the tank. And she had that same thing happen, but went over to a men's tank and didn't adjust the. Mm. the like if, if that was to happen, <laughs> if you come in, you have no tank, I, you go. Go directly to the opposite gender side and adjust the the resistance from three to four or four to three, and then just push it. That's what I would do, and that's what anyone listening if that happens to them should do. But she just started pushing the men's the men's uh, resistance. And you have to put your dumbbell in there as well, probably. So, and she had like two two lengths of that, and then had that cleared up. It's a bummer. I'm running right to the women's then and cranking it up the resistance one. I I, yeah. I should have done that. I should have just gone because it's. That's a long, it's way longer of a transition all the way to the one end versus yeah. back. So you were the is it really a lighter dumbbell? I don't think so. I, did, I thought oh, it was I the same. Okay. If it's the same, then so be it. But if you yeah. can the cut off end. 12 seconds of transition or more. Five in, five that's out. Probably, yeah, that's probably at least six, six Now seconds. Rich suddenly is sitting in ninth instead of. See? Yeah. I'm Although screwed Isaac again. You, so it's, it, you know, it's a wash. What's that? I said Isaac was in the lane next year, I think, so it's pretty mm-hmm. much a wash at that, no. that point. Yeah. Hmm. No. He was well ahead of me. Okay. I was next to no. I was, I was next to, You uh, closed hard on the burpees. I'm, uh, that's I did. that helped. I, yeah. I did not quit, which I was happy with. Yeah. I was next to 104? 104. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Yeah. 
And that actually felt good because I've been doing so much station work that doing them, I didn't feel like I, I feel like I could keep going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, just to go back on that, like 18 women sub 38, yes. last year's 20th time was 37 flat. Look where it is right now. Wow. 36, 36, 19. That's, That's great. That's what you want. Yep. The depth so is you, improving. So you figure Bethany will be put. Well, that's VL's on here twice. So we figure yeah. there's. Well, this isn't taking into account Orlando as well and then the road shows because we have um, Meg Jacoby, you already mentioned, but Shannon Payne, she's already made the Elite 12 in the she past. Us, she yeah. could easily make it again. Samantha Faddis has run fast this year. Camilla Massa nice. will be there. Oh, uh, yeah, Claudia, nice. <laughs> Claudia Pavia, who ended up getting third at the Mexico North American Regional Championship. Um, so, you know, she's got talent. So you, you've got several names. Amber Nelson will be there. Um, but yeah, I think you've got a few who potentially could break into the, the top 20 as well. Is Ciro coming? <laughs> I don't think his time will impact the women's top 20. But IZZ? IZZ should. Berenice Borrego better show up. Berenice. Yeah. Um, yes. So we figure Bethany's going to get a, a, like, who's going to be right on that. Yeah, because we always double period. right there. Yeah. Yola's double. Jezebel won't come over. Michaela won't come over. Michaela. Yeah. Nicole There's... won't. Will Alex Walker? I don't know what her plan year. is for the fall. I don't know. Maybe I she will see this year. It's in I don't think she, she's not doing Abu Dhabi because she hasn't done Spartan this year. So. Oh, well, then she'll do it. She should. And like, she uh, is she more Central Texas? Where is she? Or is she like Houston? She's in San Antonio. So this is like oh, a she's south. three hour drive. Three yeah. Half. So yeah. you figure it'd be okay. And then so four people are probably going to drop out. There's no guarantee that these top women here, that the top three, like they could go to Sweden. That's true. If you're, if you're Vivian, right. She has a, a chance to fight for this podium. Say Chicago happens. Meg, Michaela and Lauren all race Chicago. Three automatic spots are gone. And then say Meg and Lauren decide not to, and they do DECA. Then you're just looking at Michaela running and then the rest of the European contingent and Vivian's already given them work, serious yeah. work. You go over and punch your, punch your ticket because after that, if you wait on it DC and then, and, and if you go to DC and it's all three again, you have to yeah. guarantee you get yourself into that top five, which she can do. I get, I, I bet if she doesn't qualify in Chicago, she does qualify in DC. But yeah, you go to Stockholm and you can make some dough and punch your ticket. Yeah. yeah. I will say with the, the declaration between High Rocks and DECA, I hope that athletes, if they say they're going to take a top 20 spot, because there's that two-week window right after Orlando, that they actually follow through on it. And instead of just, we have a couple of no-shows at championship weekend, like that would suck if whoever's in 23rd, like Katie Duke right there, if she wants to race it and she's prevented from doing it because someone decides to do high rocks last minute because you don't need to declare for high rocks early on but you have that two-week window so mm -hmm. i think just in in fairness for the uh the other athletes i hope that if anyone does that that they they do it early mm -hmm. so at high rocks worlds you got to make sure you're in the crowd i know be in the arena but, but it be shouldn't there. be like that jump in nope i'm the, I'm, the I'm what am i gonna do no man, I'm, if i get into the top 15 race chicago i'm definitely going to declare for sweden and germany and just not go yeah. just to stick it to everybody that's how like i'm gonna do it out. now i'm not even showing up i can't wait yeah uh all right what else on the women's side here uh 18 julia ashley pro soccer player she did that in heat two um she was oh, on nice. the, the national team rich you and i were kind of bouncing back like how do you feel about this person being in heat one and versus heat two I, I couldn't make up my mind on a couple of things so we had some some back and forth and I, I think I said I expected her to finish in the top 10 but I can't justify putting someone who has a 37 yeah. to their name ahead right. of her so I, I knew she was going to do well but it would have been unfair to keep someone like Julie Best or some of the the fringe athletes outside the top 20 from from racing in heat one when with a world championship berth on the line but yeah Julia Ashley crushed it Shout outs to those with two first names. Yeah. That's how we roll. And yeah, I mean, this is pretty stacked. The women's field has showed up a pretty strong this year. So I'm happy to see that 
there is improvement, there's interest here in DecaFit, and that the women are putting focus here and, and improving and getting better and better. So it's going to be an interesting end of the year. Yep. Rich, can you pull up the, the men's field for the top 20 as well? Cause, just because we did that same thing for, for women. Um, last year, 20th was 32-27. What are we at right now? Hasn't gotten, hasn't gotten that much better. Women Not much better. Women are kicking men's butts. 32-16 <laughs> with, with international athletes. So take those two so, out. We're kind of looking yeah. like, yeah, about the same. Right about there. So yeah, it looks like uh, women have stepped it up more this year. Big time. Dudes stink. <laughs> As we know. All right. So I think that's... Team race. You got to gloat. Oh, man. We were out there kicking buns in the team race. Yeah, I figured, what's the best way to get a W? It's like, let's ah, just partner with Meg. She's just going to make it happen no matter what. But teams is so fun. It is, like, the absolute best. Mm-hmm. I got it. Was- uh confirmation that they're going to be moving the start time up like closer or, or, or um you know if it's four o'clock now it might be one or two o'clock next year just so you don't have to wait oh is that long. right yeah oh good yeah they want I had to extend extend my more. flight i had to extend my i had to extend to the next day and that kind of put me behind i'm like still tired from getting up early on that yeah but i'm kind of beat from that doubles race like running that fast my calves are how fast were you slow. moving i was running like a four by four yeah. The early ones, yeah, 60, I, I got fifty nine four every time. Fifty nine, yeah, fifty nine six. I was yeah. right behind McGee. I got the baton and I just put it to him on like the first, like the first two fifty or something like that. And then I was tired. <laughs> and then I got tired. Yeah. But yeah, Megan and I, we were second overall. McGee and Eric Williams. We good. Eric can really run. He can. He can. He's he can good. definitely get out there and do. It. I was hoping we could see him in the actual fit. So teams is fun. They're going to pay out four worlds this year for that thousand, thousand bucks for the winning team. Um, so we got it. Yeah, BK, you need to get on the team. How do you get on a team? You just got you got you got to show you up. Find someone in the Milwaukee area. Go go to Fort Wayne. Partner with Wallace. I can't go to Fort Wayne. That's this go weekend, camping right? Fort Wayne. That's this weekend. Yeah. yeah, we're we're heading out Thursday afternoon camping. Opposite direction. direction. Ah. North UP. You headed to the mm. UP? Yeah. You Michigan, technically. Don't you have to go past? Wisconsin's past like Indiana this. Indiana by going Indiana's up. Indiana's down here. <laughs> We're going up here. Uh, I didn't know where Indiana was in relation to Wisconsin. It'd be like It'd going be to Stones Texas on the way Canada. to Philadelphia. Doesn't make sense. It's not like that. Go birds. Well, I was thinking Michigan because actual Mich- Michigan, not the UP. Then you would Michigan, ask. yes, would make sense. They touch. But Michigan actually crosses over, wraps around, and touches us up up at the tip. The old UP. They touch you at the tip. Touch you at the Jack tip. Rob. Jack. That, you did that intentionally, Bracken. Yeah. Listen, you're here for comedy hour. We're here for data. Oh, yeah. I didn't hit, I didn't hit, the, I didn't hit the laugh button at, at live next time. We'll Doesn't get, work. We're going to get it. All right, let's yeah. just fill some time talking about track and field worlds. We're, there was a Spartan yeah. thing, though, that happened. What happened? West Virginia. Bahama. Bahamas, the uh, the kids. Were, well, yes, West Virginia as well for age group series. But there was um, a record that was set. Let's hear it. All right. Is this so, the trivia? Oh, uh, yeah. This will be trivia. Okay. Okay. All right. okay. 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 So, race spring teaser. Sun, uh, the, the kids race world championship in the Bahamas. It was on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then on Sunday, there was also an elite race. There was an elite race on Saturday as well. Mark Botters won that. His kids did pretty well. Um, and, and Natalie, Natalie won too, was, right? Yeah, Natalie one of one. Um, she she crushed that women's division. <laughs> Classic uh, women's elite field in the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, a new record for the youngest ever elite podium on the men's side was set. VJ's record got broken. Uh, VJ had the record for the youngest win prior, so yes, oh. that also got broken. But James Near used to hold it until Cameron sure. Tucker earlier or ethan tucker sorry her uh, her her brother earlier this year ended up um setting the youngest podium record he was 15 and something years old but grayson west 14 years old just got an elite podium what's the trivia question i just gave away the answer oh jack (laughs) all right all right women's side (laughs) 
We'll go redo there. It. Redo it. We'll put it on social and we'll act redo like it. you didn't blow it. Oh, no. the, what's the question? The, I don't the question the, was going to be who, who was the prior record holder for the, the youngest podium. And I was just reading off the list. So <laughs> you're still working on your, your yeah. trivia host. Yeah. You got the comedy part down. I need to have, got I need that. to be able to display the, the photo, but you don't like no. doing that. So that, that's what gets me out of there. Um, no. But anyway, all right, go, go ahead. Guess the, the youngest uh, female elite podium athlete ever. Name or age? Both. If you want. Winter Vanecki. Is that a human? Is that not her name? Winter Vanecki? <laughs> it's know. close. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about. No, I have no Olympic idea. Ski jumper? No. Hit that with confidence. Yeah, that was, I was like, yeah, could have fooled me, but I'm like, maybe there's someone I don't know about. Goodness. Nah. Um, I have no get. Uh, I have no guess. Yeah, uh, Lily Elkin? Nope. There, there's a girl in um, Australia, Danielle Hills, not Danielle, Danielle. Uh, her sister's Joanna Hills, who I have mentioned. She was like undefeated in her first 15 races or so, just never really faced the big dogs. But her sister's even better than her. And she was 13 years old when she got a podium a couple of years ago. Wow. Now, yeah. And she, her, Danielle runs like 208 for the 800 as a 16 wow. year old girl. She might be the fastest 800 runner in all of OCR right now. And she's Definitely. just a, yeah. Men, no male else or female. Run. Pretty close. Yeah. I can't believe you don't know Winter Vanecki, Jack. Come on. I, I don't. I thought it was a season. U.S. How national team her? for aerial skiing. Marathon finisher on seven continents, and that was okay. when she was 15. Mm. Did she do well, Spartan? Was, yeah, that's how I knew about her. She did Spartan. Yeah. Nice job anyway, with Jack's facts. Bo butchered it. Teaser. Uh, I, I forgot to ask the question. I just read the answer. So, <laughs> good job, you just, Grace and Wes. <laughs> you were just spitting off facts just the way yeah. that you do. Like I said, hey, it takes some, it takes, you can't be the best trivia presenter no, I, was, I was just reading the text that i in the, sent in the first. steve hammond and forgot to phrase it as a question i just read it verbatim so you can yeah, still job. make you can still make the sheet we just I i'm will. just not going to show it just for your own sake for, Look, for internal I'll use only i'll get a tyler recruity worthy question next week all right we'll get a good yeah, we, we smoked that one dude you're not going to get one. this next one all right top moment from world's track and field real quick what was our favorite part the Femke Bowl redemption story. Mm. Is that a event good... mixed four by four trips, loses the baton like what five meters from the finish line? I wouldn't get, even say trips. I just like just face first night. Yeah, yeah. Lo Taken lost down. it. They they missed their podium spot. They missed the win. Missed everything. They got DQ'd. She comes back, wins the four hundred meter hurdles. No Sydney McLaughlin here. Um, and then on the four by four women's race to close the meet, she just made up like what five, six meters in the final home stretch, out kicking everybody. It was very impressive. So she she was the star in my eyes. The Dutch really care about that mixed four hundred, mixed four by four. Put in like Lika Klava and Femke Bol, like their yeah. best two female athletes, and we got like Matt Bowling out there. You know, hey, they still yeah. set a record. That's your favorite event. Yeah. How about you, Rich? Okay, what was, what was your favorite thing? I don't know. It was maybe my favorite world championships. All of it? Yeah. It was just start to finish upsets or great battles. Yeah. There are really no blowouts outside of a couple of the sprints. Mm -hmm. But every race came down to it. And so if I had to choose one, I guess Faith Kipigon. For both? I love yeah, it's She's the first so ever good. to do the 1500 5K on the female side. No one's really? ever completed Could that double Jacob at World Championships. That field just blew it so bad in that 5K. Like, how could you wait until 400 with a 407 miler in the field? <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. understand. I get it. And, and there's been a lot of talk about that online for a long time. But I think the one, and, and you're right, you're absolutely right. If it were just a snapshot race. But the fact is that people had to run prelims of all these events. And so running, let's say you're a 1435K runner and you ran 1450 in heats 
in heat and humidity. And two days later, you have to do it again. Like it's just, it's not a easy task to now run 20 seconds off your PR and then 48 hours later, push from 2K out or from two miles out. It's just, I think it's more difficult than it would seem. And the other thing that everyone forgets is that every person in here was the biggest monster in their city, state, country growing up. And they all believe that they're the best. They all believe they can outkick everyone. And they're like, I don't care if she's a 407 miler. I'm a 1425 5K runner. She's coming up. She's going to be too tired. I just, I think there's more to it. In a one-off race, run her legs off. But by the time you get to the finals, I think all bets are off. But for Safan Hassan to just be hanging there after she already ran the 10K, multiple rounds of the 15, multiple of the 5K at that point, and she was the one who gave the biggest push in the 5K at the end, they could have done more. I I'm agree. You should. I'm on Rich's it's side. Your, oh, I'm on Rich's side. I'm just giving the counter to it. It's what they should have done to Mo Farah for years. Mm -hmm. Run a 1240 race and see what happens. Because you know what happens if you run 1255 to 1320. You, we already have seen that every year. It's the only yeah. way. I just think that no one's willing to do that at that point because no one's yeah. fresh. Yeah. I mean, mentally to, to execute that type of race in the moment, you're probably like, maybe everybody else will die and I'll just outlast. <laughs> right. It just feels so bad that it's hard to, to make that move. And uh, Hassan who had, yeah, raced a lot, but like she should know, right. She should take it at a thousand at least. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't get it. I don't know why you don't just say we're going to... This is what they said, for again, for Mo Farah for years. Just team run. Take three people, switch laps off, and run them out of it. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose either way. That might be the thing, right? Like Even as like some of the American runners who... In the 5K, was Munson around Munson as long? Munson and Cranny, I think. They were both sort of... Like, like, Munson got like dead last. Started. Yeah. So the, right. That's what happened to him in the 10K, too, is like yeah. they were there and then they just really, really weren't. So is there and I mean, for them, it's not too far off of their actual. But anyway, there should be somebody that just is. Yeah, maybe you're just right. BK, just some people there. like that, like you've got 1240 people in there. Right. Go run 1250 pace. I don't think it would have mattered on the men's side. And it may not have mattered on the women's side. She set the 5K world record this year as well. Yeah, for sure. In the so past. she's for the sure. 5K yeah. and mile world record holder this year. So what are you going to do from her to her? Nothing. Maybe catch her slipping, maybe box her in. Yeah. Do you want to know which, which other race, in speaking of the women's 5K, I thought was fantastic. Did you see the woman from Estonia or the 19-year-old just go to the front? Because they were so the slow on the yeah, she yeah. had like a hundred fifty meter lead. She was, no, it was killing like everybody. Two hundred. Was it that much? It, it was the exact other side of the track, and then they they caught her in like the last hundred fifty. Like yep, but then yeah. she injured her hip and couldn't race in the finals, and it was like, oh, that's brutal. I know. It was so gutsy. Well, the, the German the steeplechaser did that too. Oh, Set really? A big PR just, and just yeah. PR'd, went for it, and made it to finals. Yeah. 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 Then anything can happen. Yep. Then anything can happen. What do you guys think of the women's eight? I I didn't, you can't yeah you can't play around in middle distance. You got to race more than once before a world championship. You're, you're it does. She just wasn't sharp. Yeah, I think eight hundred and mile are the same events to me in terms of how you have to execute. Eight hundred is even more like on a knife edge, but just because you're the best person there doesn't mean you can race like everyone else sucks. Mm. And that's what has got Jakob two years in a row at world championships. And it's what got a thing Mo is that you still have to treat them like they are capable of beating you. You can't waste things. You can't leave things open. You can't, you can't treat people as if they suck because every single one of them has thought about you for 365 days. Mm -hmm. But going on in 56, like the fact that the other women were able to hang on, that's, that's really impressive. Yeah. It didn't seem like, it didn't seem like she was playing around with them in that final. No. I felt that she, she in the prelim, she went 27, her first 200. Yeah. And then dawdled and then got tripped up. And in the final, yeah. she's like, I'm just better. I'm going to go out in 56 and you can't hang, but they can now. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Keeley's run 156. You have people that are just that good that you can't just break them in 400. 
and Yakov surging up the way he'll surge and then not winding up from enough. Like you, you have to treat them the way they need, like you have to put the dog down. You can't just expect that it's going to lay down for you. Mm -hmm. Middle distance yeah. is fascinating to me. And the men's 800. Yeah. The guy from Canada, AROP, like just last to first over the course. Of, I think his move down the back stretch for it's about 120 meters. Out. He did it in. Yeah, for which is a good move for him. He went from he usually last to is first. front front runner, mm -hmm. you know. So he's he's played around with that technique, his strategy, and that clearly paid. So a longer out, longer move out was like a good yeah. move for him. Last I year, up, I don't know if you remember, he front ran, got and work. he he had a gap, and he led until like ninety to go or something yeah. or hundred to go, and then got gobbled up. And uh, they said they had played around with strategies, and he decided on the cut in that he was going to not, uh, he was going to drop to the back. He hmm. just, it just felt right. So I did it. Like, that's, that's crazy to do in a final. For sure. For yeah. sure. They, they went out wild. really fast also. They were like 49. Right. So crazy. And uh, yeah, the 800 anymore when I'm watching, it's, it's so much the, the difference between the best and like the 20th best is so marginal. That it is just all about, it seems like it's just about position and tactics. Yeah. The entire mm -hmm. race, like, are you where you need to be? And does it break your way? And did you make the right decision to put yourself in the right place? Because everyone can, everyone can kick. Everybody can go out hard. It's just a matter of, like, where you are when it's time to finish. I feel like and there are no, more, more 143 to 145 guys than ever, but you don't have that, like, Rudisha or 142, 141 type guys anymore. Yeah. So it's so clustered. That's exactly what I was going to say. As soon as Brazier left, like there's no top dog. Everyone's a monster and no one's head and shoulders above. Yeah. What else happened that was good and fun? But yeah, that I men's love watching was... pole vault and Jeff. <sighs> pole vault was killing me, man. During the, li during the live part of the women's 5K, they yeah. kept cutting to the pole vault, yeah. watching these guys knock they over this bar. They just need to go inside with the rest of the gymnasts and just exist in a different sport do we need them in our sport what else can they do they do one thing track and field is the strangest sport to describe to people <laughs> like it's a running event but sometimes we jump over things they're called hurdles and they fall over if you hit them too hard except for one time they make the barrier over something that you can't knock over and then one of the times per lap you have to jump into water. Hmm. You don't have to land in it. You can clear it if you want. Also, there's a few events where you don't run at all. You just throw stuff. There's a couple where you run and jump. One time you jump three times. And one, they give you a long fiberglass pole and see if you can propel yourself up over stuff. <laughs> and sometimes you spin while you throw. And other times you just throw straight on. Yeah. The freaking what, what, what do you throw? Like a baseball? No, no. Like common mm -hmm. things. Like, like a heavy ball a dense or a heavy ball. ball on a chain. Or I guess just a heavy ball that's been flattened into a disc. <laughs> a dinner plate. It just doesn't make any sense. If you had pitched this sport to people, they'd have you through running. Okay, I get it. And then running and jumping for distance or height. Okay, I could see that. Hurdles would get funky. And then the field events, it's a whole different sport. I'm not trashing those events. It's just a, the sport in general doesn't make any logical sense. But at least there's derivative with pretty much everything except pole vault. There's crossover and other things except pole vault. And the throws don't make sense. They're their own sport. But the so throws I'm, at least, at least like, a, like a, a hammer and a discus and a shot put, like the mechanics of it are similar to just like using a different implement. And like you could be good at, if you're good at one, like chances are you could be pretty good at other. Jab okay. maybe not as much, but pole vault, what it, <laughs> What are we doing here? It's like uh, power tumbling on the trampoline. Exactly. Like it fits in gymnastics. That I agree with skill that. That skill set is much more similar to what they're doing, and it takes up so much time, and they cut away from running events for it. <laughs> and I don't want to see that shit anymore. Yeah. The, the closest the track. event to it is the vault in gymnastics. You run down a runway and then launch yourself. That's the closest there is. The only reason it's a track event is because they put it on the track. Right. Just put it on the indoor track. Give them a little strip. Let them go. Yeah. 
I've yeah. had this argument with Audrey before. She comes with a swimming background where I'm like, you you guys kind of have some fake events. But now that we're describing it with uh, with track, it kind of seems like there are as well. What, what I mean by that is, it's like, how fast can we get from A to B backwards? Imagine if we had the backwards 100 meters or, or whatever, or now you're only allowed to, you know, move your arms in a certain way. Now go slower. Let's see how yeah, fast you can go with a slower way. It's like, here yeah. comes the high knees 3K. It's like, that's made Butterfly. Up. Yeah. We're going to get well, slower and less efficient. Yep. It's, a, it's like race walking, I guess. Yeah. It, I, each stroke serves its purpose at some point in swimming, but the fact that it's like Michael Phelps won eight golds, it's like, because those events exist. Like, right. You, that's, right. That's right. how right. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Swimming's strange. It's, but I mean, swimming's not, but some of the events are strange. Race walking is the most bizarre competition other than, <laughs> yeah, like, sh I don't know dressage or show jumping or something with horses that's, that's got to go soon too i would love it if we had some race if like next year whatever goofy games show up 30k, 30K race walking loaded <laughs> you got to carry something over your head while race walking can't break that stride think of the concept of race walking we're going to test who's the fastest at doing something that you're not allowed to go the fastest format <laughs> so we're going to go a to b but you have to walk you can't run slow down it's yeah. kind of like, like the breaststroke. That's a good that's point. That's a drunk Jack. college idea. Yeah. That yeah. Is. Like, let's play tag, it. but you can only walk. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> that'll be sick. <laughs> like, that's what race walking is. I'm moving slow motion. How we do you do it you faster, practice? but we're going to walk like idiots instead. How, how do you practice for it? Like, it, it, it looks like you you're it. literally just trying to hold in a dump the whole time. And you're just looking for the nearest porta potty, and you do that for like three hours in a row. So Wisconsin has a strong race walking program at UW Parkside. I believe it. And my high school principal was a competitive race walker and he was always out. I'd see him just sweating buckets, walking like he had hip impingements. Jeez. I'd rather see like what's what's worse, race walking or like competitive elliptigo. Competitive elliptigo. Yeah. I'd rather see roller like derby. I would much rather watch roller derby and make it like as close to like professional wrestling as possible. Than, than there I are would. some sports that don't make any sense and they're only around because they were already there. Yeah. And race yeah. walking is one of them. Like why not high rocks instead of race walking? So, <laughs> so back when I competed in at UNH for track, there was a woman, Joanne Dow. She was like in her early forties. And when we'd finish up track practice, she would come and practice her race walking afterwards and she had the same coach as us and she ended up making the beijing olympics in 2008 she finished like 30th or so but can you was... just do it if you're a good runner and you just decide i'm gonna race walk can you Probably. just do it and just like be good i took exercise walking for one term in college as one nice. of my wasted uh pe credits and we we time trialed and me and a, a woman on the side a girl at the time probably not a woman yet when you're a sophomore in college yeah, technically, but not I was over 18. Yeah. You're, you're, you were certainly yeah. a boy. I was a boy. Anyway, you we decided to go after it. We warmed up and we everyone else is like talking and we went after it. And the front of my shins burned more than they've ever burned in any event I've ever done. It was so uncomfortable and unnatural. She give you that work? I think we tied. I think oh, we got like two and a half laps in and decided, all right, we're just hanging on. What, what you was your lost. thousand split? Like four or five minutes or are you slower than that? We we are nine something for the mile. Oh, okay. So, and they're averaging, they're, they're doing like 78, 79 doing. minutes for half marathon, which is like respectable they are also for running. One of the what? highest percentage of getting caught doping, doping sports yeah. in the world. What? They're one of the, what? the, crazy. the heaviest dopers on the planet in terms your, of endurance sports. It's is like cycling. walking is walking that way. Is that going to give you the aerobic and like, like what's the, what's the limiter here? Is it muscular? Like what is, what happens? Like is your heart rate 150? Like, is it 170? Like, or does it like stay at like 120s? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's goofy games material though. That's what I'm saying. Just have somebody over. Go Ruck is like, man, what can we do that's more dumb? Like, what if you need to race walk your way out of a a, a, a harmful situation with a little? What if you had stepped in a ton of gum and you could never fully get off the ground, but you were in a life or death situation? Yeah, yeah. You were running, but you didn't have any laces in your shoes, and you had to run for your life. How would you get out of here? We're gonna test that. 
yeah, you got to be prepared for that kind of thing because you might die. Yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> you have a claymore attached to your feet and you can't spread too far apart or you're going to blow up. It's like the movie. These speed. are your skills. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a concept of speed. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Yeah. There's like there's like six people on Earth right now who are like, I'm never listening to this again. <laughs> These guys are offending me. Yeah. This is we're not race block what, brain. We're race. Brain. They don't they don't know what they're talking about. Hey, that's why we keep it. We keep it broad. Race brain. We can talk about any racing that we want. It's true. <laughs> Even if you walk. All right, squad. Well, that'll do it for us today. For Bracken Crocker, Jack Bauer signing off. We'll talk to you soon.